Perry said the Russian media was lying when it reported the Ukrainian army was representing NATO's interests and also denied claims that Ukraine was behind a rocket strike that killed 30 civilians. This broadcast of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, comedy-minded and liberty-focused, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 30th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Patrons at a local Boston sports club watched dumbfounded today as an unidentified man's personal trainer forced him to put on an embarrassing athletic spectacle for the entire gym. Like a machine, there you go. According to sources, the degrading little show went on for nearly 45 minutes, with the man reportedly being paraded around every section of the fitness establishment doing anything his trainer commanded. I wish I could turn around and concentrate on my workout, but I can't help but keep watching. He has to know how ridiculous he looks. Sources added that the whole spectacle was made even sadder by the personal trainer encouraging the man to, quote, push himself a little harder. It's like watching a f***ing trained seal. Okay, so when you stand like that, you want to feel pressure in your knees, like this, right here, okay? Okay, give it a shot. You root for him to tell the trainer that he's a human being with dignity and just walk away. But no, he keeps subjecting himself to this. All right. Let's have you get on your back and walk like a crab. Come on. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 3733. It's the live Saturday edition of the program with you in studio. You've got me, Ian. And Mark. All right. So, of course, we'll talk to you about anything coming up tonight. The Pirate Bay is back. Plus, Forbes magazine is claiming there's no evidence that dark web drug sites like the Silk Road are helping to reduce violence. I'd like to dig into that if we get the chance. But, Mark, when you were last on the show, which was Thursday night because you take Friday nights off, uh, when you were last on, you uh, we had teased the hell out of a story we never got to. And I always feel bad. Uh, when that happens. So the story is about uh, some elementary school students having their pants searched, as in dropping their pants in front of some sort of teacher. Yes. It's a strange story. But for poop stains? I guess that's what it is. From Gustine, Texas, reported on by Fox13now.com, a group of students at an elementary school in Texas were apparently asked to lower their pants for a poop inspection on Monday. School educators told two dozen students that they were regularly finding feces on the gym floor. I don't exactly know why that might be, but I, I believe them. Someone's a prankster. <laughs> Perhaps. The students were uh, then separated into groups of boys and girls in order to pull down their pants so administrators could check if they could find anything. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. Maria Medina, whose 11-year-old daughter was searched, said her daughter's privacy was violated. She told uh, uh, WFAA yeah. the teachers involved should be fired. That's Gust- pretty violating. That's about as violating as you can get right, you know, right before actual sexual molestation. Gustine Independent School District Superintendent Ken Baugh acknowledged that uh, making kids drop their pants goes too far. However, <laughs> he said the students were only asked to lower their pants a little. What does that, that even mean? I don't know. Th- yeah, that sounds like he's covering for somebody to me. Like well, that's that, ha- that's an opinion. That's uh, I, it's certainly uh, who knows what yeah. happened here. It's very difficult to know. But um, I, like I I think that the age of the students is what disturbs me here. How old? I missed. I missed eleven. Okay. Um, in this in this case of this one girl that's uh, quoted. So that's like the high end of elementary school, right? Because I think I was around ten when I graduated elementary school. Yeah, I think that it, this would be middle school, where um, or you know junior high, yeah. where I'm from. But it could be, I suppose, eleven's fine. But um, you know, if you're talking about a kindergartner, they may need some help or something. Like you know, bathroom things go wrong in that age group. Yeah, and that's isn't that why they had uh, bathrooms in the kindergarten classrooms? I don't know if you remember that. When that's how it was up. at my school. Yeah, I, but I, I, it wasn't I pres- in first grade. I, I presume that's because you'd rather not have them walking a far distance to the bathrooms alone, that kind of thing. I that's what I assume too. 
So I would think that in that case, teachers would, like, it would just depend on the age. And especially with kids maturing younger these days, uh, you know, I, I, I blame the hormones of the meat, but that's me. They, uh, you know, 11-year-olds starting to hit puberty. So there we go on. He's, the inspector says, that's not appropriate, and we don't condone that. So you would take disciplinary action. I assume he's referring to himself when he says you. <laughs> you. <laughs> um, so I will take this. That's a weird thing. I, yeah. You is used funny, especially down south. You okay. know, it's just the way it is. Anyway. And this was down south? I'm sorry. I this is in Texas. Too. Texas, okay. Baugh said the investigation should be wrapped up this week, and angry parents are planning to speak at the next school board meeting. And uh, there you go. Well, okay, Mark, you've got a, a six-year-old son now. Is he almost seven? Oh, He'll he? be seven soon. Almost seven. He doesn't go to government school, and this was a government school. But right. were he to be going to a government school, how would you feel as a parent? Um, well, I don't have an 11-year-old, uh, but today at seven, if there's some kind of uh, mix, mishap, I would appreciate any adult helping that can help. That's how I would feel. What does that mean? That almost sounds like a political answer. I mean, no, if there's a mishap, teacher, like a bathroom mishap, right? This wasn't a bathroom mishap. This was in the gym, right? I don't the, know why they're finding the, feces they said, on the gym floor. Feces was on the gym floor, so they then had the what kids What if somebody's having an accident? Well, okay. Well, I got, I got you there. That's something you'd want to deal with if you knew who was doing it. But it sounds to me like this was uh, they were trying to determine who the culprit was. By having, what was it, a dozen uh, students or so? They separated them into boys and girls and then... Uh, uh, that doesn't make it okay to have a gym teacher or whoever the hell was doing this uh, scope out your kids' private areas. Okay. I, I, and were we both interpreting Whose kids are we talking here? about here? Different... You asked me about to talk about my kid, and I did. Right. So are you saying you'd be all right with them doing this? He's seven years old. He may have a bath bathroom mishap. It does happen at that age in, in that age group. So yes, I would appreciate somebody helping out. You Are have you to really know saying who to help. You think this is wow. I'm like I'm a, I'm a really kind of shocked by your answer here. You're saying you'd be okay with someone who's not you or your family doctor or your mother telling your son to drop his pants on suspicion that he might have been the person who's been pooping in the gym. Well, I I don't because you think he has a bathroom problem. No, this isn't a problem with going to the bathroom in the wrong spot or whatever. How do you know? This is. It's happened multiple times. It what sounds if somebody like a prank. has a problem? Okay, it sounds, it sounds like, like a prank. prank to me too, yeah. Ian. It's not like I've never been to school before. Even if but it I'm is telling a you, I don't know if it's a problem or not. E even if it is a problem, if the child doesn't vocalize a concern, then it's not appropriate for anyone to just, on suspicion, start mass searching the butt cracks of the students here. I know the s superintendent said what he only had them drop them a little bit, or this gym teacher. That whoever. was the investigator. The investigator, whoever the hell that was. His the, name's Baugh. The investigator, uh, whoever was investigating the children's butt cracks in this case. Ken Baugh, school district superintendent. Well, Ken was saying he didn't agree with this, right? So it was the investigator or whoever? Yeah, no, the, the, the investigator is Ken Baugh, yeah. So the superintendent investigated the situation. So whoever it was that dropped uh, the pants of the kids, I don't believe that when, when he's saying they didn't drop them all the way, I think he means like to the floor. Because you would have to drop them at least far enough to be able to inspect whether or not there was some sort of stain on the underwear or staining Something. or staining or like re remnant uh, fecal matter on the butt cheeks, right? So we're talking about an in serious invasion of privacy, and you're really sitting here saying, well, it'd be fine if my son had a problem with his bowel movements to have someone help with that. This doesn't sound like helping with this anything is a, like This that. is a group of 11-year-olds or something thereabouts, and I think that's a different situation. How's What is different? Okay, I'm sorry. Look, you're a trained broadcaster. Learn how to answer your question prop. Ask your pre question properly. Okay. You asked me what would I do in the case of my son. My son is on the outside of what I would at seven years old is on the nearly seven years old is on the outside of what I would find acceptable to be helping a child with those this situations. This isn't helping a child with that situation. I don't understand why you. Why think would this you is ask me anyone? about my son then? If you don't, want I was me to asking ask you how you would feel as a parent who just had your son's privacy violated, and I you were your response is well, if they're helping him with his 
bowel movements, then that's fine. I mean, this is bizarre to me. This isn't strange to you. This I, isn't like shocking. And I think what they're trying to do is to find the perpetrator of mm-hmm. the pranks here. That'd be my guess. Uh, is, is that that there okay are pranks that? going on, and they're trying to find the perpetrator, and then hopefully shame that individual. Maybe well, make them clean try it up. Reviewing some security camera footage. That's or a good idea. Coming up with something that doesn't involve having elementary school, or I don't care if they're in their middle school or high school, having anybody, even if it was the other teachers. I don't care if it's you know. I don't care if they call in a dozen teachers and demanded they pull their pants down it's inappropriate i'm with you okay good i said like you okay, were saying listen this is your problem man you do not listen to the things that people say these are I've 11 year olds you. i'm talking about six-year-olds you're saying it's okay for someone to drop the pants on a group of six-year-olds to hunt out the poop stains? I, I think that the person who's in charge of one of I'm the jobs— I'm listening to you okay. crystal clear. One of the jobs of people that are in charge of watching groups of young children is to handle potty functions. Uh-huh. And you're going to have to handle that. So, yes, I think that that's fine. Wow, I'd love to know how you feel about this. Toll free number is 855 450 free. I see kids running around naked all the, together all the time. What's the big deal? Your kids don't run around naked at the government elementary school. I, or my the kid's never been to a school. government elementary school. I, I, the original question was if he did go to this how school, am I supposed how would you to feel know? about it? You seem like you're you're being very obtuse, like purposefully obtuse on this, and it's very strange to me. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. Apparently, Mark's totally fine uh, because his son is young, uh, having someone search through his pants. It's ridiculous. That's really disturbing to me. 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. Do you think this is okay? Are you, are you on Mark's side on this one? Just let some school administrator go through your kid's pants? In front of other people, presumably, even if it wasn't in front of other people. It's weird. Free Talk Live. I walk my dog every day. We walk every morning. And I've got the best-looking dog in the neighborhood named Stanley. He's a collie mix. Teddy is a rescue dog. He's a, a lab. We meet the same people every day. People comment about what a beautiful black coat he has. They'll tell me, oh, he's so soft and he's so silky. There's a difference when I compare Teddy to the other dogs. And these dogs that have the brittle hair, it's coarse. It doesn't lay nice. It's not shiny. It's dull. I tell them about Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. I've told them this is what I use. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. And it really made his coat shiny. You know, it didn't take very long. They've got their nice, expensive jogging suit on, and their dog has their smooth, beautiful, soft, shiny coat. And now their dog looks just as good as they do. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. dot com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. 
find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're here on this live Saturday edition of the program and have a pound of free coffee waiting for you. Yeah, go get a free pound of coffee at uh, coffee.freetalklive.com. It's Buzzbox Coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. It's delicious coffee, among the best you'll ever drink. And you get a pound for free. You pay for the shipping, you get the coffee. It's a subscription program. You can cancel it at any time. If you want to just get this, uh, get the pound, that's cool. If you continue to get the coffee, however, it takes care of that coffee sh- uh, shopping program. It upgrades your coffee drinking experience. I basically won't buy coffee out anymore because it's not going to be as good as my coffee so i'll just take that extra few minutes to brew something at home before i run out Um, it's just better that way coffee.freetalklive.com but what they do that's different than other companies is they give us back some of the proceeds so that we are able to give out micro loans through kiva.org kiva.org is a company that uh, gives microloans to people all around the world. And when they pay them back, you can give them out to people again. It's amazing. We've helped many people, and through the, the, the help of people just getting their coffee, through coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so, Mark, you have what to me is a very disturbing story, and you don't seem to be as disturbed by this. I don't know why you said that. I said I'm disturbed by it. Well, you're apparently you're disturbed arbitrarily, though. You're disturbed okay. that, first of all, there was a group of 11-year-olds uh, in an elementary school. We have one student, just, just to be clear, one student is 11. It was a group of students in a gym class. That makes me think they're all about Probably 11. Probably the same age. So let's say 10 or 11-year-olds. Or 12, uh, I don't know. Being, if you're 12 in elementary school, you've probably been held back for a couple years. Okay. Um, Depends on what we're talking about. I think that elementary schools differ in different areas, right? Like they could go up to seventh maybe. grade for all I know. I've never heard of that, but I suppose. Anyway, what happened was there was some bowel movements that had been found in the gym, apparently. Pieces, yep, on the floor. Uh, multiple times. And this resulted in some gym teacher or whoever getting the brilliant idea to go ahead and force all the students in the gym class to drop trow. Uh, they sep- It's okay, though, because they separated them to males and females. Nope. I don't think it's okay. No one's justifying that. That's just, just reporting on what happened. Okay. You're, okay, so let me see if I've got you clear here, Mark. You're saying it's fine if you do it to the 10- and 11-year-olds. But, or excuse me, you're saying it's not fine if you do it to 10 or 11 year olds, but it's okay if it were six or seven year olds because you believe that they need help with their uh, poops. Well, I would have to know more about the situation if we're talking about six and seven year olds. But what I'm saying is, this is an authority figure, um, you know, I'd be at government school teacher, regular school teacher, babysitter, or whomever it is, when confronted with a excrement problem mm. in a group of kids is going to have to solve that excrement problem the way that they solve that excrement problem. I don't know, but it is part of the job. And there should be some kind of training around that. I don't know what the training should be, but if I had to deal with it, it like there's what appears to be human poop in the middle of my floor. I've got three kids there. I'd be like, whose is this? 
And, uh, you know, that way I can help them clean up their pants, get them new shorts on, things mm. like that. If they don't tell me, what am I supposed to do exactly? Well, you're not I, supposed to just strip search all of the kids, nor should you strip search any of them. Let's go to Gary listening in uh, Livingston, Montana. Gary, you're on Free Talk Live on this live Saturday show. Go ahead. Well, you know, I don't think they approach this from an investigatory scientific point of view. Uh what they did is that it was like trying to match up the uh, barrel of a rifle to some uh, gunshot residue, and that's never going to get yeah. you a good result. <laughs> that's true. I mean, you are talking what, about what, elementary schoolers, so, I mean, who knows well, how good know, some but, of them are at wiping anyway. Yeah, but what they need to do is approach this from a ballistic standpoint. <laughs> now, what they did is they had, they had a slug there. And it's got the riflings, and so all they needed to do was demand samples from all the students in there, and then match up the slug to the uh, to the riflings on the lands and grooves. And uh, I'm sure there's a laboratory at Homeland Security for this, and they can uh, get a ballistics match. I'm with you, absolutely. Good call, Gary. Thank you <laughs> for brilliant. making it tonight. We certainly, certainly appreciate it. <laughs> Toll free numbers eight fifty five four fifty free. Pam is in Knoxville, listening online at freetalklive.com. Hello, Pam. Hey, how are you? Um, listen, uh, Mark's crazy. Okay. There's just no way. I, I've got two sons, and they're grown now, but there's no way. No way. I'd, I'd have a fit on those folks. Well, I, it's not this situation that bothers me. It's just what I what Ian has character. Ian's falsely characterized me. Oh, I'm just no, saying. I don't, think so. don't you think that an elementary school teacher who's say got a kindergarten class needs to be able to handle excrement issues now and then? Well, of course, but you don't go around and, and have all of them drop their pants. It's crazy, Mark. Well, what do you recommend? Well, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a teacher. I, I don't know exactly what I do with, you know, it sitting on the floor. But, you know, uh, Ian had mentioned cameras. And if it was like a, that. a problem that kept on, you know, continuing, there's obviously, you know, other ways you can deal with that. Well, the weird thing about what Mark's saying here, and he's accusing me of not listening to him, which is ridiculous, uh, the weird thing is he's suggesting that, there, that, this, that he's concerned that one of the students has some sort of issue going to the bathroom. No, I'm not concerned and with that at all. These if, are a bunch of— In 11- theory, it were six- or seven-year-olds, okay, yeah. right? So uh, you're con- you would be concerned that if these were six- or seven-year-olds, that one of them would be having some sort of issue. If one of them was having an issue uh, going number two, then there would probably be a mess in their pants— and it would be incredibly obvious amongst a group of children which one of them had the poopy pants because the kids will probably be pointing at that person and going, ew, because it's going to stink really bad. And you're not going to need to do anything more than use your five senses to determine uh, who the culprit is in that case without having to strip search anyone. I mean, Pam, what do you think? I agree absolutely. I I can't see that happening. It's it's actually you brought it up and I just I I can't believe it. And then I can't believe then Mark you know says that you know it'd be okay for his child to go through something like that. At, at what age, Mark, would it not be okay? It seems like you've drawn an arbitrary line somewhere. Uh, where is that arbitrary line? I Ten guess or eleven, the- too old. Six or seven, that's okay to go ahead and just pull their pants down. Well, I don't know. Um, As okay, a teacher. So, so here's the thing: is kids tend not to have this hang up around nakedness that the rest of us do, right? Like they're all, you know, they running around naked in the yard and stuff like that. Not at school. I, I, if you're sending them to nudist camp, then I guess you wouldn't. This wouldn't be a problem. But uh, this is a government school. I can't imagine any six-year-olds are going to be scarred by that. Maybe I'm just wrong. I don't have any clue, but I don't see how that's going to be the case. Wow. Yeah, unless think you think wrong, nakedness Mark. is bad. I, I think it's a slippery slope. Thank you, Pam, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Look, Mark, I'm with you. I got no hang-ups about the idea of nakedness. But Apparently in, you do. In society, no, no, no. The hang-up is that when I was growing up, and I don't think this was bad advice, I was given the advice of, hey, you shouldn't get naked for anyone except your parents or your doctor, and that's it, you know, when you're a kid or whatever, because the other person might be a molester or somebody that you don't want to get naked in front of. That could be a bad thing. And so it's just generally a good idea to have your kids keep their clothes on around strangers. The te- Your teachers are not strangers, It doesn't hopefully. mean that it's okay for them to strip your kids down just because they suspect something. I'm not saying – look – it, it- I, I don't know what to tell you. you. You shouldn't tell me anything else. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. We've got Carl. He's on the line in Atlantic City. Carl, you're on Free Talk Live. Thanks for taking my call. This is 2015. 
the school's got plenty of money. Take DNA from them children and then match it up with them the poop samples. It certainly would be less invasive, I suppose, to do a mouth swab. Carl, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. 855 450 free. You can take control here. This is the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. What do you think? You ever hear about Ghost 80% AR-15 rifle kits? At Guns80.com, they are the 80% specialists, helping to protect our privacy. Look, there are forces out there right now trying to register guns for future confiscation. UN treaties threatening our Second Amendment, our freedom. You need a Ghost AR-15. Get it at Guns80.com. Call 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. Own an AR-15 today and keep it a secret. Go to Guns80.com. That's Guns80.com. 844-2-GUNS-80. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. It's a landmark day in the March for Equality here in America. Congress passed the Casinos for Fairness Act today, which gives every mistreated group in America the right to open a casino. It worked with Native Americans. It will work for the rest of the country. If our society has kept you down, you will get a casino to pull yourselves back up. Veterans will also have the right to open a casino as a replacement for costlier benefit programs. I think it'd be nice to have a casino. I mean, I'd rather still be able to walk, but, you know. While the majority of the country is handling the Casino Act as a step forward, many Native Americans are objecting to the law. We are still the most disadvantaged group in America. So all that we ask is that we be allowed to open whorehouses and start legally selling cocaine. The bill raised the question of whether immigrants should be allowed to own casinos. After much debate, the legislature decided that they would not, but they will be able to sell sliced mango on the street without a vendor license. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We're here to take your calls. You can bring up anything you'd like. That we're talking about a sh- what I find to be shocking story out of Texas, uh, where apparently some elementary schoolers were told to drop their pants for a poop inspection. The gym teacher apparently wanted to know who the culprit was 
Uh, who was it was going number two on the floor of the gym? Apparently, it had happened more than once. Uh, I'm not sure over what kind of a span of time, however many days or It's got to be irritating, though, huh? We're talking about, no doubt. Um, I mean, that's got to be frustrating. But at the same time, I don't think that uh, forcing kids to take their pants off or drop their pants, even part of the way, which is what the school superintendent said. The superintendent says he disagrees with what happened. He's going to do some sort of disciplinary action, which could be wagging his finger and issuing a memo. I mean, it, there's... There's not necessarily any guarantee that that disciplinary action is going to be a severe in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, so the superintendent said publicly he doesn't support it, but at the same time, uh, you know, I find this very, very disturbing, and I want to get your thoughts. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I'm also really disturbed, Mark, by what you had said earlier, and apparently I'm not alone in this, in that you said that if it was a group of six- or seven-year-olds, it was actually a group of 11-year-olds around there, but if it were a, a younger group, like as young as your son, that you would be okay with it on the belief that the teacher just had the best interests of the children at heart and you know they just wanted to find out if somebody might have had a poop problem. Or well, something I, like I would that. say this. Um, I think that this is probably a better way to state it. If I don't think the teacher has the, the best interest of the students at heart, like if I don't truly absolutely believe that because you know we leave my son with people now and then sometimes mm -hmm. uh, teachers and sometimes babysitters and if i don't think those people have the absolute best interest of my son at heart i'm not leaving him with them well you wouldn't know necessarily because you don't get to know the teachers at the government school there's what one day where they i've let never the parents sent my kid in? to government school i understand and that, i wouldn't Mark. because i don't trust government bureaucrats okay right. i got gotcha. you the, the original question was if he was going to a government school how you would feel about I don't really this. know how I would feel because I you know that's like, a fair it's answer. so far out of the realm of possibility here I think most uh, I think most parents would be pretty shocked by this and I think they would not be okay even if they did trust this person even if it was somebody that they knew personally that they would be okay with them taking their kids pants off or asking their kids to drop trow. Uh, in front of them for an intimate inspection like this. This is shocking. Let's uh, continue with your calls and thoughts uh, here in a moment. Also want to let you know about ExpressCoin. It's the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. Bitcoins, Litecoin, or Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. Plus, they've jumped through the government's hoops. They're a licensed money services business. You don't have to worry about them uh, you know, being shift, uh, shifty and uncertain about what's going to happen with your money, you get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or by making a deposit at a local credit union. We've done it yep. with ExpressCoin.com, and we'll do it again. You can go to uh, ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the United States or Canada, ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it now from your smartphone via their app, which you can download at ExpressCoin.com. And don't forget, when you place your order, you can use coupon code FTL to get up to $40 worth of your favorite cryptocurrency with no fee whatsoever. So remember code FTL, like Free Talk Live, for ExpressCoin.com as we go to Austin, listening in Charleston, South Carolina, to WTMA. Go ahead, Austin. Yeah, where did this uh, incident happen? Texas. Texas. Well, did you say where or when? Oh, where? Yeah, Texas. Well, Galeen, uh, Texas? Yeah, Galeen, Texas. Okay. Well, years ago, about, I guess, 15 years ago, I worked in a little small factory in Tennessee, and uh, they would hire a bus in these uh, Guatemalans and Nicaraguans, and these are adults. They would often do their business in inappropriate places. And finally, the, uh, the owner of the factory just called the company and told them to come and get these people. Man, I can't handle it. Here in Charleston, we have a different problem. It's, I don't know, uh, how, what are those kids doing in a gymnasium unsupervised in, uh, in, in the first place? Uh, but, I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe Charleston, like before gym class, they uh, assemble there and or something? It's certainly possible that you could go into a gym uh, without anyone being there, especially if it was your intention to go and lay one out on the floor. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, so, that's that's what they do in Charleston at the uh, at the library. They poop in the library. Yes, young black males. Uh, I, I was. Well, in how do you know they're? How, excuse me. How do you know they're black people that are doing it? That's because, well, I'll just put it this way. I caught what I'm doing uh, just as I said. Okay, well, I would say just because you caught a black person doesn't mean that young white males wouldn't do the exact same thing, sir. Let's well, I've never clear. heard of it. But anyway, 
things like that do occur, and it's just malicious. I don't know what to say, what, what the reason for this It certainly was. is, but how do you feel about the idea of uh, forcing the kids to drop their, their pants? Well, I, I was uh, in fifth grade. Uh, yeah, I was about 10 years old. And by the way, uh, most kids now in my uh, where I went to school, there was no grade skipping at that time. Uh, you were about you were close to twelve years old by the time you got out of sixth grade. Okay. But I don't. Uh, I was forced to drop my pants one time. Uh, For what? Uh, uh, well, the teacher wanted to know why I couldn't sit in my chair correctly at my desk, and uh, I said, "Well, I got a uh, uh, whip last night." And uh, I had some welts on my butt because I'd gotten a good strap in from Daddy's leather belt. I'm not saying I did not deserve it. I probably did. Well, but, I mean, it was very it was very unobtrusive. I just pulled them down, so you know. Did she want to see? Why did, yeah, why did she ask you to pull your pants down? Well, because, uh, because uh, like as I said, I could not sit in my chair. Pro- so she wanted to verify enough. your story was the idea? Like yeah, well, you, no, you, she was worried about child abuse. I see. Well, I'm also worried about child abuse. Thank you, Austin, for the call tonight, and I consider spanking to be abusive. Uh, Your thoughts are welcome. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's continue. We've got Robert. He's in Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live, Robert. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Go ahead, sir. It used to be, uh, well, when I was a kid, uh, I mean, if if there was a problem like this, where you have know, a kid left a log on the, you know, on the gym floor, you know, they just typically put to put the kids in a circle in the middle of the gym, and then the gym teacher would come out and would explain, that, you know, this is what happened, and we need to find out, you know, who this belongs to, you know. <laughs> they, never, they never asked us to pull our pants down, but what they did do is they just go behind us and just kind of just pull the back of our pants and. And if it was left in the air, just go on to the next child. So they pulled the back of your pants, meaning they would pull it outwards a few inches and just take yeah. a peek yeah. down there? Yeah, that, I don't see that, that, that that's inappropriate. I the would say that's I inappropriate. Do is that yeah. If my child was having a problem with, you know, uh, to not make it to the bathroom, I would certainly be letting the school know that, hey, this is a problem, just to give them you know, kind of a heads up. Mm-hmm. You know, so, Ian, just, you do know. you think that – what do you think the reason that they're going in and trying to investigate and find out who's doing this? I mean, what do you think the reason is? Uh, uh, it could be anything, you know, nowadays. It really could be. I don't think that it's appropriate to go and, you know, strip a kid out or, or you know, pull his pants all the way down to, to his ankles. No need to. Right. I mean, we've had uh, we've had stories before. Thank you, Robert, for the call tonight. We've had stories before about uh, kids being searched in ways that I thought were inappropriate. Like, you know, the uh, what was it? The story about the kid that allegedly dropped five bucks or whatever under the table. And then some other kid was 20, 20 bucks or whatever. Some other kid was sort of fingered as the culprit of. Yeah, it turns out he didn't do it. But uh, what did they do to him? What did they strip him down to? I forget. Yeah, they did strip him in the bathroom to look for it. Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, you know, I don't think you were okay with that back then. No, I'm not okay with that one. Um, but let what, me ask. What was the question you asked? I'm sorry. Yeah, the question is: Is what do you think they were gonna like? Why do you think they were stripping the kids to look for them? Well, ostensibly, uh, they wanted to see if there was some sort of evidence of uh, poopery going but what on. What do you think that they were gonna do when they found that? That's a darn good question. Don't you think this is all about shame? I don't know. I don't want to read into this. It could have been about somebody being a pervert and, you know, having an excuse to pull down some kid's pants. I don't think that was about perversion. I think it was about uh, this is public shaming. And I kind of feel I'm like not okay with that either. If you're, poop, you know, intentionally, uh, maliciously pooping on the floor, but you don't know like, if it was uh, intentional. Well, we don't. But if it keeps happening over and over again with an 11 year old, there's a good chance. That yeah, it like is. I think that we're in the realm of I think we can err on the side of this is intentional, malicious pranksters. And that maybe they should be ashamed of their behavior. Okay, fine. But the way you've determined it is inappropriate. You don't pull down kids' pants. 855-450-FREE. More coming up here. Your thoughts welcome. It's Free Talk Live. How fast are new Allegra gel caps? I didn't know you got a cap fast. How strong are new Allegra gel caps? Ten more lawns to go strong. 
Non-drowsy Allegra gives you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms in just one hour, two times faster than Claritin, and stays strong for 24 hours. It's relief when the pollen's off the charts strong, even in the convertible. New Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster. Nothing's stronger. Guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. Use only as directed. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturing. If you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free here. 855-450-FREE is the number. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. The Pirate Bay is back by the way, and back at their old address. We can talk more about that. Plus, the Silk Road has been accused, uh, and other drug underground drug sites like the Silk Road. Forbes magazine staff member is accusing uh, them of not actually reducing violence. Because there, no there was a study done by some, I don't know, sociologist or something like that. Yeah. I hesitate to call sociology a science, but we'll call it a soft science. Okay. Um, that said that the Silk Road and un other online drug marketplaces made the world safer because they 
sort of detached uh, buyers from sellers uh, geographically when it came to right. uh, to drugs. We can talk more Even about Even wholesale or, or um, buyers and sellers. Yeah, I want to talk more about that when we get the chance. But we're in the midst of your calls and thoughts here regarding a disturbing story out of uh, Texas where some elementary schoolers, older elementary schoolers, but to me the age doesn't make a difference, unlike Mark where it apparently does, uh, who had their pants searched in that they were forced to drop their pants in front of a teacher, in front of a gym teacher, I think, who wanted to investigate the source of some uh, some poops that had been left on the gym floor on apparently more than one occasion. So I guess he, he or she had gotten so frustrated uh, with that situation that they decided they were going to invade the privacy in a very, very uh, intimate and invasive manner and in what I consider to be a very shocking story. And want to hear your thoughts at 855-450 free. Let's go to Nick listening in Charleston, South Carolina. Nick, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi guys. Hey, go ahead, sir. Um I think that because it happened at a government school, it's typical of their behavior to condition young people to accept police searches later on in life unquestioningly. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a real concern. I mean, we certainly know that the government schools are constantly conditioning students to accept the idea of authority as something that's good, something that's beneficial and necessary. They have the police around frequently in these schools. We've read stories of police actually going in and shutting down schools during these sort of practice raids uh, that they do where it'll be in the middle of the daytime and the cops will come in with dogs and sniff out kids' backpacks and, you know, pointing guns around. And, wow, it's just so scary. It sounds like a police state uh, fairly frequently at government schools these days. I, so I would say that that's the certainly circumstances that go on at government schools where they're um, intending to uh, to condition kids and this may be one of those circumstances or you know it may just sort of be the uh, the cycle um, of, of this sort of thing I I don't know like to me I would want I, I trusted me, some I'm... of my ki my teachers right I trusted a lot of my teachers so therefore that's you know I assume they have their best, their students' best interests in, in at heart, um, and this isn't one of those situations. I don't know, though. I would, I would simply hold an essay contest on cleanliness. You know, I mean, I wouldn't even go that direction. I would, I would try to to find a creative solution. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there are other options besides inspecting someone's butt crack. Uh, or for skid marks on uh, their tidy whities or whatever. Nick, uh, anything else you want to share tonight? No, thank you. Thank you for the call. Appreciate it. Let's go to Skype where Aaron's on the line, I think in Philly. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hi, Ian, Mark. Hey, Ian, I feel like you've been a little hard on Mark. I it's his a, job. <laughs> I had a six-year-old, and uh, I remember there was one day, even in the cafeteria, where he just dropped his pants to show off his SpongeBob underwear. And it wasn't, there's an age of innocence there where, and then, I mean, later that year, he also had an incident where he did have an accident in his pants and the nurse had to have him take off his pants. And Well, okay, and they, hold on. Before you go on, generally the rule was when I was growing up, you don't do that except for, you know, for a doctor. And I guess a nurse would qualify for that um, or for your parents. But if you, you're dropping trowel on your own to show off your underwear in the uh, the school lunchroom, I would say that's an entirely different circumstance than being ordered by a supposed authority figure to remove one's pants. I find that to be very disturbing, don't you? Well, in both the, in the situation with the nurse, he was told to take off his pants because he made a mess in them. Mm -hmm. But the, I cite the underwear thing because he was at an age where he was so innocent, it didn't mean anything to him to have his pants down. That's fine. Like, this isn't really about whether it means uh, something to the child, I don't but think. Ian, it's about what's appropriate and how to behave around other people's well, children. You've revealed twice here that you had this. your parents had this conversation with you about strangers and taking your pants down. I think it was my parents. Yeah, I'm pretty but sure. I, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Or, or your government indoctrination center or whatever it was. That conversation's never been had with Jack. Mm -hmm. He's uh, to, to the best. Of, he's not going to be in a situation um, if— 
you know, if I can help it, where he has to know that. And to know not I, to drop his pants for someone who tells him to? Or I'm going to do it a little later, right? Like, I don't want him today, while we're learning how to properly deal with people, to, like, kids are scared enough. Mm-hmm. And I don't need, and I don't think the extra scare, you know what them strangers might do? They might take your pants down and touch your parts, <laughs> right? Like, and it's obvious it was has been a big effect on you, because you've cited it twice here um, just on the show. I, you haven't, I haven't cited it. That conversation really wasn't had with me, or at least it wasn't internalized in the same way. So basically, you think that if somebody tells Jack, your son, to drop his pants, that that's no big deal. Like, you know, that's fine. Is that what, what do you mean, saying? just somebody? Just any old person. I mean, who knows? Jack, uh, 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 Ian, no one has told Jack that. that. Yeah, you know of. People shouldn't be leaving their kids with people they don't trust. Like, that's the long and the short of it. If you're leaving p- your kid with people you don't trust, then the crap's on you. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally understand. Um, but unfortunately, lots of parents send their kids to government school. Mark has the ability to have his uh, child homeschooled, which I think is fantastic. But the realistic, you know, the world we live in here includes a lot of people going to government school, which essentially means you are leaving your kids uh, in the control of people throughout the day that you really don't know very, very well. Maybe you've gone to uh, the parent-teacher night and you've met them once and they seem nice enough, but so does the perverted old uncle as well that uh, you don't know that he's cornering your son in the the back room or whatever and, you know, asking him to take his pants off. Would uh, Should Jack go ahead and drop his pants for uh, for some, uh, you know, grandfather or uncle? or something like that? I'm sure his grandfather has absolutely changed his uh, diapers and done things with him. This story to me sounds like someone who got frustrated, like trying to figure out who did this. And it's just, if it were his own six kids and one of them was pooping in the house somewhere and he asked them all to do an inspection, Mm -hmm. like that would be normal. So it sounds like someone who just sort of got too familiar with these kids he deals with every day. So you, you would agree this is abnormal kids. behavior, right? This is something that shouldn't be done, uh, whether the well, child is 11 years old or whether it's six years old. He's acting too familiar with someone else's kids. He's not that close to those people to be trusted in that way. So I agree it's inappropriate due to the relationship. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron, for the call tonight. Look, I'm all in favor of the idea of free-range kids, Mark. I don't think that you should be scaring your kids to death or anything like that. I like the idea of kids having independence, more independence than you know the average helicopter parent uh, would necessarily allow their kids to have. But at the same time, I'm sure the average free-range parent or whatever, someone who would like encourage their kids to walk home from school, uh, at the same time, they probably wouldn't want their kids to walk down a spooky alleyway with some strange person and then, you know, take their pants down for a quick inspection. I mean, that's just not okay, right? I don't know where you're getting all that from uh, the conversation we're having. I mean, I I don't know where you're getting it. What What's confusing to you? I mean, you've basically said— I would agree said, with you. The scenario you set up that most free-range parents would not want their kids right. uh, to take their pants down in front right. of people. I don't know what you're talking about, though. Well, you've like, been acting like it's no big deal if uh, kid, if younger children take their pants down in front of certain okay. adults. So my son has run around at swimming pools with uh, other in, in the backyards of uh, friends' houses with other kids mm-hmm. completely naked. Okay. Is that horrifying to no, you, Ian? No, not at all. Okay. Because it's not you horrifying were there. to me you either. You consented to that. Sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. Well, if it was something that went on in the past and you were fine with it then, then presumably you'd be fine with it in the future. Sometimes my wife's there. Why should I trust her? She could do anything, Ian. Well, if you don't trust your wife, you shouldn't be married to her. If you don't trust your your gym teacher, your kids shouldn't be with them. I don't... (laughs) Your, your gym teacher is never going to be on the same level of trust as your your wife. And Absolutely. they should also not have access to your kids' private parts. I'm sorry. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. John, you're in uh, Kentucky listening to WKCT. John, go ahead. Uh, yes, Mark, I have a question for you. Sure. Can... Uh, does your kid go out and play in the playground with other kids? Yep. Is there other adults there? Yep. Do you know these adults for a fact that they're good people? I mean, I have to agree with Ian. You, you to me, sound like you're avoiding answering the question. Let me ask you this. If your kid is 11 years old, 
I don't know what it's like to have 11 year olds. You didn't really even let him ask the question. Hang on, John. We're going to bring you back and give you a chance to get your thoughts out. Can you hang through the news with us? Yeah. All right. More Thanks. with John here in Kentucky. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can take control here. It's the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. This morning, Sandra Sneed wrote a joyful status. This miss is a soon-to-be missus. Over 300 friends liked her engagement post, and it got 76 comments. Sandra, you're one popular gal. Geico also has a comment on your status. Did you know you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance in just 15 minutes by switching to Geico? Just the way we're trying to help cushion a nice little nest egg for the future misses. Hashtag getting hitched. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee. Coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik four packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, January 31st, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.25 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,284 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $230. Antiwar.com reports on Friday, Israel announced it is offering tenders for another 450 new settlement units in the occupied West Bank, spanning several neighborhoods in occupied East Jerusalem, as well as sites near Hebron. It's the first major settlement plan to go public since the elections were scheduled, and watchdog Peace Now was extremely critical, accusing Netanyahu of a pre-election grab. Settler voters are often sought after by right-wing parties, and Netanyahu may be trying to emphasize his policy of dramatic expansion at the expense of major diplomatic harm ahead of the vote. The U.S. again criticized the plan expansion, warning it will inflame tensions and harm the peace process. There's been no sign, despite repeated U.S. complaints, that Netanyahu intends to slow the expansion anytime soon. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports heading for an expected Saturday morning landing in Baja, Mexico, two balloonists crossing the Pacific have made history by traveling farther and longer in a gas balloon than anyone else ever. The pilots of the helium-filled two eagles eclipsed the distance record of more than 5,209 miles on Thursday afternoon and the duration record of more than 137 hours Friday morning. The old distance record was set in 1981 by the Double Eagle 5 on the only other Trans-Pacific 
Pacific Balloon Crossing. The previous duration record came in the historic 1978 Transatlantic Crossing by Double Eagle 2. The Two Eagles website takes care to note that the records remain unofficial until validated by the U.S. National Aeronautics Association and the International Air Sport Governing Body. At 6 p.m. Pacific Time Friday, the balloon was moving south of Baja, California at 17,200 feet, traveling at 45 miles per hour. Touchdown is expected for 8 a.m. Pacific Time on Saturday. When their historic voyage ends, likely on a beach along the southern end of the peninsula, the pair will have traveled over 6,800 miles since taking off Sunday from Saga, Japan. The balloonists plan a little show for the cameras on their approach. They'll skim the ocean surface, trailing thick ropes to slow them down. Then they'll rise and land among the dunes in what is known as a splash and dance. A chase team was headed for the projected landing site Friday to record the arrival and help secure the balloon. However, the south of the border finale is far from the original flight plan and landing spot. The two eagles had expected to take a northern route into British Columbia, crossing the Canadian Rockies and then dropping down down into the United States, perhaps landing somewhere in the eastern U.S. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expressCoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports Ohio has postponed the executions of seven death row inmates so it can procure an adequate supply of its new two-drug lethal injection protocol. U.S. District Judge Gregory L. Frost ordered the stay of all executions scheduled to take place in 2015 after the state changed the drugs it uses in executions. The change came after it took an extended amount of time for Dennis McGuire to die by lethal injection in 2014. The state used a new combination of drugs for his execution, might Zolom and hydromorphone. The state began using that drug combination after the European Union voted in 2011 to prohibit the sale of pentobarbital for use in executions. McGuire was gasping and choking during his 25-minute execution. It should have taken about 10 minutes. The Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction said it needs extra time to secure a supply of a new two-drug cocktail before it can carry out any more executions. Executions for 2016 are still scheduled as planned. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. God loses his decision-making coin. This is Doyle Redland reporting. The Lord God has confirmed that he has misplaced his special decision-making coin. The coin, a relatively unremarkable 1972 nickel, has been used almost daily by the Supreme Being for over four billion years for the purpose of determining everything from the direction of the wind to the outcome of history. The visibly distraught God added, I have no idea where I put it. I remember flipping it last night for a couple in Monroe, Michigan, who were trying to conceive a child, but I haven't seen it since. God also said he hopes to locate the coin before 7.15 Thursday morning when United Flight 251 takes off from Seattle with actress Dixie Carter on board. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. You can bring up anything that you'd like, though. We started this, uh, the show out tonight with a disturbing story about some elementary schoolers, maybe around 11 or 10 or 11 years old, being searched very intimately because apparently, well, allegedly, one of them was pooping in the gym. Someone has been pooping in the gym. Yeah, it could have been a teacher. I mean, we don't know who was uh, pooping in the gym. <laughs> Apparently, they did not catch the culprit, by the way, from what I understand. they. I, searched, I haven't found any information about the culprit being caught. They searched over a dozen students' pants, yeah. having them drop their pants, to presumably search either their, you know, their tidy whities for their poop stains or their actual butt cracks. I don't know what exactly they were looking for, but that's what they did. And they didn't find the culprit. So that led to a conversation about, well, you know, Mark, how would you feel about this? And, of course, your son isn't in government school, so you're fortunate and he's that not this 11. isn't going to happen. And he's six or seven or se- almost seven years old. 
And you said that you would be okay uh, with someone you trusted, like a teacher, searching your son's pants. I don't know what searching means, but uh, looking down, helping looking at your son's I said helping crack. him with bathroom issues is what is like the terminology. It was on, in the context of them dropping trow in front of them. And you were totally fine with that, which I and a number of our callers have found disturbing, although there have been a couple of callers who've aligned with you on this one. Uh, and I have to say, I'm shocked, Mark. Uh, you know, I, I came into this conversation presuming that we'd be on the same page on this. I I am on the same page with you. I think that this is an unacceptable use of power in this circumstance. No, no, no. You're dodging. You're mm -hmm. dodging and you're being you're twisting what you said earlier. In this circumstance, but what you said was okay was if the kids were six or seven years old, you'd be totally fine with it. I don't think uh, six or seven year olds have the same uh, shame that uh, this isn't is about inculcated shame. This into is about them. teaching your kids as a parent that it's not a good idea to strip naked uh, for people that aren't you know your parents or the doctor or something in some situation like that. But John held through the news patiently to talk to you about this, Mark. Uh, John, you're on Free Talk Live again. Go ahead with your thoughts. Mark, I mean, like I said before before the news came on, if, if your kid is out in the playground and this total stranger that you don't know and you don't even know he's talking to him pulls him to the side and asks him, I think I smell poop. I need to, to, to check your pants. Will you pull your pants down? Would you be all right with that? Because no, you, me, obviously I wouldn't be because I wouldn't. Uh, this is about trust. Uh, I've been very clear that this is about trust. How can you well, trust what, some? <laughs> Go ahead, John. What I'm trying. What I'm trying to say though is, you said you have not had this conversation with your son. Where is that point? You need to scare your son to the point that he don't need or want to talk to strangers of any type, and he needs to feel uncomfortable. Well, the fact of, regardless of who it is that's not related to him, asking him to pull his pants down, has it not been an okay thing? Yeah, I, I don't want him to be scared of strangers. I don't want him to be uh, frightened of them and uh, think that they're going to do terrible, horrible things to no, him. No, I don't want you to misunderstand me on that. Okay. I'm not saying scared of strangers. I'm saying to be alert enough, and, and I'm not taking anything away from you as you're raising your child because that's your business. That's nobody else's business. But you should make your child alert enough to let him know that, you know, certain things around certain people are not allowed. Yeah, I and think I'm going to have that conversation when he's really sort of going out on his own and doing things. Well, Currently, well, the most he's done. Like beforehand? I'm sorry, what's that? What if something like this happens before you have a chance to have that conversation and he's, you know, he's not sure, but, wait, you know, he's an adult. I've always been taught to respect my adults, so maybe I should pull my pants down for this person. Mm. Well, how's it going to happen if I'm there? Are you there right you now? Always, he's in Florida. Are, yeah. Are you always 24-7 around your child to protect him? Most of the time uh, when he's here in New Hampshire, he, most of the time he's got a parent or a grandparent around him. Yes. But it, it takes that five seconds at a playground for somebody to abduct a child. Abduct? Well, I mean, there's nothing There's nothing he could do about an abduction anyway. I mean, if somebody picks my son up, he's going to, you know, he's going to start hollering anyway. Well, to me, what happened in this school is, Almost, to me, the same thing, because I'd be going to that school whipping somebody's butt if they did that to my child. So to you, John, it doesn't matter what the age is, right? Mark seemed to be making some right. kind of discrepancy between the age. I say it's inappropriate whether they're 5, 10, or 15. I mean, it's inappropriate to ask uh, a child or a, a, even a teenager to disrobe in front of uh, someone. Inappropriate because public schools... And God bless you for not being to have the ability to be able to homeschool your child. Uh, uh, but yeah, public schools are known across the United States to have teachers that do things with students that don't need to be done. Yeah, that's. I think that that's a big discrepancy here is the trust issue. Uh, many people don't trust uh, government schools, and probably for good reason. I don't either, but I'm just you know not going to send my kid to one. Well, you know, again, I'll bring it up again. When my parents told me that you don't get to show your private parts to anybody but the doctor or mom or dad, they didn't include my uncle 
in that, not because they didn't trust him, but because that's just none of his business. That's not an appropriate— When do you think that conversation was had? I was pretty young. I don't know at what age, but it was— You certainly seem to remember it. I I mean, mean, I I barely remember anything from being six years old. I think my parents were concerned. They wanted to help keep me safe from somebody that might try to take advantage of me. Now, thankfully, no one ever did. Um, but if they had, I would have known, hey, well, you're not the doctor, so sorry, you don't get to see me take my pants off. That's not going to happen, except for the next time. I neighbor. mean, an uncle, an uncle, a cousin, anybody could, you know, say, hey, I smell something. or We don't have that many relatives. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Okay, Mark. Hey, John, I want to thank you for the call tonight. I think you've been very reasonable and Thanks, uh, appreciate the perspective. Thanks. Yep, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Darlene. She's in Columbia, South Carolina. Hello, Darlene. Hello, how are you? Hey, good. You're on with Ian and Mark okay, on Free Talk I, Live. Okay, I was just calling to respond to the issue that you all was talking about. Please. To me, it really doesn't have logic to it because... At that age, when children go to the bathroom, they're not wipe if they have a bowel movement. They're not wiping themselves good anyway. Okay? Right, so you're not so going to know, start, huh? Right, so if you even pulling down their pants as what happened and, uh, in this gym, that's not going to necessarily give you evidence of who the culprit was. Exactly, exactly. Besides the point, that, um, I really think it's very inappropriate. For them to be checking children behind and underwear. Why don't they call the child parent and have the parent come to the school and then um, go from there? But they should be pulling down children underwear. To ch- <laughs> That is ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, Just or, about anything's a better solution than what they did. Or keep the gym locked until there's a teacher there who can be in there monitoring and might actually notice if a kid goes behind the bleachers and cops a squat. I mean, I, and we don't know where the poop was found. Maybe it was right in the middle of the gym floor. I mean, who knows how brazen this uh, person was. And regardless whether a child is homeschool, public school, private school, no school, a child needs to know what's going on in this world. Because if you leave a child going and not knowing what's going to happen or may happen, I mean, you're leaving the child hanging for anything to happen to him. Mark, I want you to talk to your child, okay? Okay, thanks. Thanks for the call, Darlene. Good advice. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Another piece of advice my parents gave me that was memorable was you don't get in cars with strangers either, with people that you don't know, uh, people who aren't expecting to pick you up. Now, again, I don't think that – I don't agree that you I don't should know that I have kids this conversation with my parents. I really don't know that this then conversation was I think they dropped had. the ball with you. Uh, well, then, psh, look, I mean, if we want to look at uh, you know who had more sexual problems with, strain- or with uh, people when they were younger, it'd be you, not me, right? Any problems? Well, y- no you, one molested you me. Experienced, you experimented with somebody older than you significantly earlier when than I, was I did. was young, okay, yeah, I did, but so, that's okay. Do you think your parents would have been all right with that? I really don't know. It was I none of their damn not. business what I was doing. Yeah. But that person wasn't in a position of authority over me or anything like that. Age kind of Or makes, was it a stranger? Age kind of makes, makes authority. It Ed, was my next-door neighbor, and we were friends. Our t- toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I don't think kids should be scared or prevented from going out into the world, but giving them a couple baseline pieces of advice, like don't get into cars with people you don't know, and, uh, and also don't drop your pants. For people that you know or don't know. I think that's good advice when they're going out in the world. More coming up here in moments. 855-450 free. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. His hair was falling out in clumps. PD stopped eating and all his hair fell out. Mounds and mounds of fur all over the place. Our hairballs have hairballs. Our golden retriever, Sundance, he scratched incessantly. There was hair all over. I heard a radio advertisement for Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids, zinc. There's flaxseed oil, the seaweed, the kelp, the digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Within two weeks. The shedding slowed down to almost none. The scratching went away after a few days, and Sundance's coat was starting to get shiny and glossy the way it had when she was a puppy. Tons of energy, no more bad smells. If your dog has 
shedding, dry skin, excessive scratching. The phone number for Dynavite is 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition. You can dial toll-free here to bring up whatever you'd like at 855-450-FREE. Also talking about a disturbing story out of Texas at a government school where some elementary schoolers were forced or... I don't know if they were forced, but they were told to. And, of course, the teacher's in a position of so-called authority over these kids, so they took their pants off uh, as the teachers were looking for evidence of a mystery pooper in the gym. And there are some different opinions about this on the show here tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE if you want to share yours. Uh, Plus, if you care about online privacy, not just your real-life privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's like pants for the Internet. (laughs) Global Virtual Private Network, that's what it actually is. They encrypt your data connection, so your internet service provider cannot snoop on you anymore. They probably are logging the websites you're visiting, the search terms you're entering. They may be keeping those logs. Searching your butt crack for the feces of the internet. Your digital butt crack. Uh, At least uh, you can protect yourself in this way. There are other ways you should protect yourself online. ProXPN is one step of a few really good ones that you should take. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Once you get started with their free software that you can download for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or even Android devices, once you get started you will be protected from the snoopings of your internet service provider or maybe you're at an internet coffee shop or something like that and the the administrator there is also logging what you're doing. You never know. Uh, ProXPN protects you from all 
all of that. Plus, if you're a Linux user, there uh, there's an easy way to get ProXPN working for you, too. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. And then when you're ready to upgrade for their premium account with unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, and... You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites with it. You can use code FTL50 to get a 50% off of the annual account price, which is a heck of a deal. It brings the price down to around $5 per month, and that savings is locked in for the lifetime of your account. So when you're ready to renew a year later, you'll get the same great deal. It's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and don't forget promo code FTL50 to get a great discount on privacy that's priceless. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts here. Phil is listening in Norfolk, Virginia. Phil, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Welcome. You're listening to WNIS. Go ahead, sir. All right. Yeah, um, you know, first of all, I, I think the teacher was completely wrong by doing what, what he did or she did. Um, I think people are overlooking the whole thing. If it only happened one time, yeah, I think maybe it was a kid. But seeing that it happened multiple times, I really think it's an adult that may have a problem with that gym teacher. That's a good point, and I had suggested earlier that it could be an adult, and the fact that it is being done so consistently, I think you're right, may be evidence of that. But then again, the size of the bowel movement might also be evidence, don't you think? Well, you know what? They always say you see those commercials on TV for those probiotics. They say the kids have larger bowel uh, movements than adults do. I didn't know that. I had not. Because, I don't have kids, because so they I, haven't had the 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 stuff to clog up the actual intestinal walls. You think there's any truth to that, Mark? Um, I, I'm asking Mark here if there's if he thinks there's no. Any truth I was. To I've, that. I've produced uh, more sizable production. <laughs> you as, as an adult. You've compared. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Phil. Anything yeah, else you want to share? Just, I just don't see a kid of that age being uh, that vindictive. That sounds more like a, uh, an adult that has an anger issue with that gym teacher. Thanks for the call tonight, Phil. I appreciate the speculation. Let's talk to Terrence. He's listening in Madison, Wisconsin, to the mic, 92, 92.1 WXXM. Hey, Terrence. Hey, guys. Um, I'd just like to chime in on this subject. Um, I'm sorry. I'm breathing a little heavy. I'm just walking here. Sure. Um, my kids, I belong to a religious group which views the, you know, the naked human form as something that's sacred and, you know, that shouldn't be necessarily hidden. Um, so I guess I have a little bit of a different perspective, and I think it's all situational. I mean, we go to a festival every year that's clothing optional. And that's great. I kids, think that's great. I, I want to make it clear. I don't have a problem with nakedness, and I think that if you want to take your kids to a nudist festival or live in a nudist camp or send them to a nudist school, I think that's fully within your your purview. But go ahead with your with your story. So I guess I, my my general point is, you know, when when we started going to this festival, you know, we had a conversation with them about it's appropriate there at that festival for that to happen. It's appropriate in the locker room at the gym when they're changing before they get ready to jump in the pool, you know, but it's not appropriate, you know, in other circumstances, you know, in any other circumstance. And, and I think, yeah, trust has something to do with it if they are like at a neighbor's house or, you know, at a relative's house, then it's, it's more about, do you trust this person? And, and you can have those individual conversations. But to me, it's not really about, you know, who's doing it. It's about where it's being done and in, in, in what context, you know. And, again, at the festival, it's an appropriate context. And, and it's, you know, something, you know, beautiful and worth celebrating. But, you know, in a school, not an appropriate context. I'm you with know? you there, Terrence. Kids, Good call tonight. I appreciate you go to public school, so, you know. I appreciate hearing from you. Thanks for the call tonight, Terrence. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Gene, the Christian anarchist, is on the line in Tennessee. Hello, Gene. Greetings, guys. Um, Just thought I'd switch gears and talk about the direction that the medical field is going since uh, uh, that kind of affects everybody. You're a bit of an expert in this area. Well, I I don't know about an expert, but my wife's a doctor, and I'm the administrator of our practice. All right. What's happening out there? Uh, the trend is continuing. Uh, Obamacare is just another extension of Medicare. So basically, they've just uh, added more people to the Medicare rolls or 
you know, through the private parties are Medicare supplement replacement type plans. So it's basically uh, cutting the cost of reimbursements to all of the practitioners. And in the same, in the same instance, they're adding more burdens for the practitioner to do in order to bill for the same codes, because all the billing is done by codes. And so if you have a code for a, a regular type office visit, the reimbursement through Medicare might be um, $65. Now, a lot of these replacement plans might be a couple of dollars more. They might give you $68, $69, whatever. But what they're doing now through all these uh, things, is they're, they're adding more steps that the doctor has to go through in order to bill for the same code. Yeah, they're adding so, office workers because the doctor doesn't have time to do this stuff, so they have to offload it to somebody. And uh, they're you know basically creating a uh, another level of paper So more pusher. bureaucracy, more overhead for yeah. doctor's offices. Yes, we have 20 people working in our office. We've got 20 people How on our How many doctors? Payroll. We have, my wife's the only doctor, we have uh, one full-time nurse practitioner and two part-time nurse practitioners, so they're kind of like junior doctors, so they can see patients as well. So basically, so, there's three doctors, let's just call it three doctors. And a bunch of paper pushers. And 22, did you say? About 20. 20 all together, counting those three, so about 17 others. 17 paper pushers for three doctors. It's ridiculous. I mean, gone are the days when a doctor could do their job and uh, have somebody handle the office. Right, and gone are the days when you might actually have a chance to have a doctor you know, do a house call or something like that. And it's always been the case that there's been a tremendous compliance load, and so what you're saying is it's getting worse. Thanks, Gene, for the call. Toll-free number tonight, 855-453. And, of course, that's just going to result in more doctors just throwing up their hands in frustration and saying, you know what, I could be out shooting uh, you know, on the links, shooting ho- holes with golf or whatever you call it. <laughs> I've never done golf except for mini golf. 855-450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Genesis is defined as an origin, creation, or the beginning. Genesis Communications Network began with the mission of providing you with the kind of compelling content you're listening to now. And at GCNlive.com, you'll find a free archive of our nation's history, narrated by GCN hosts. Explore, share, and pass down to future generations. GCN is the future of talk radio, but we should always strive to learn from our past. Together, we are GCNlive.com. GCN. Do good people ever want to call an attorney just to find out if they're right or wrong? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what are you forced to think about first? Money. If you could call as often as you wanted and talk as long as you need without a bill, would you call? Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. You can talk to us about the main issue on the show here tonight. So far, it's been the privacy of your children, whether they're in government school or wherever. I don't think it's appropriate, whether it's the YMCA or a private school or anything like that, for what happened in a elementary school in Texas to happen. Uh, and what happened was there was some gym teacher who decided to essentially strip search, uh, had a bunch of kids drop their pants in elementary school to search and see if they were the culprit of, the, of being the person who had been leaving some poops in the gym. And uh, over some sort of time period, there were a number of poops that were left on the gym floor in some manner. We don't know where in the gym but uh, the teacher decided that the appropriate way to deal with this would be to inspect the crevices of, uh, of the students. And I don't think that's okay. Uh, you're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Mark said that if it were a younger group of students, that he'd be totally fine with it uh, if, you know, if it were six- or seven-year-olds. But for some reason, because they were older, you don't think it was okay. I don't think it's okay no matter how old the kids are. I think it's entirely inappropriate. Your thoughts, again, are welcome here. And you've probably heard about Bitcoin, maybe even heard about blockchains. But what does it all mean for you? You can head to the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. We're going to be there at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin on March 28th and 29th. Uh, we had a great time at the Texas Bitcoin Conference last year, and I'm excited to go this year because I think it's going to be even better. I mean, obviously, the second year you run a conference, you iron out some of the kinks from the first year. And I think the major kink, if there was a kink at the first ep the first edition of this, it was that it wasn't in downtown Austin. This time it's going to be right in the heart of downtown Austin, and you are not going to want to miss it. There are going to be some uh, awesome keynote speakers, including world-famous investor, economist, and author George Gilder, plus IBM's architect of their blockchain technology, Adept, Sambala Nair, will be flying in from India. David Johnston will be there, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, Charlie Shrem, and other speakers are still being lined up. It's the biggest Bitcoin event going, and especially since the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference will also be hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. If you want a glimpse into the future going even beyond Bitcoin, you'll want to be in Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. You go to TexasBitcoinConference.com, get your tickets, use code FTL when you're checking out, and you'll get a $25 discount off the already a very affordable $150 admission price. So knock $25 bucks off of that by using code FTL, plus another $25 of the admission will be donated to Sean's Outpost with every ticket purchase when you use the code FTL. So you get a great price on a one-of-a-kind event, and you're also helping Sean's Outpost with their outreach and assistance to the homeless. Free Talk Live, again, was in attendance last year. We'll be there again broadcasting live this year. We we'll look forward to seeing you March 28th and 29th here in 2015. 
TexasBitcoinConference.com. Get your tickets now and use code FTL to be a part of the future. As we go to your calls and thoughts, Mandy is listening in Myrtle Beach. Mandy, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hi, Ian and Mark. Hey, Mandy. I just want to I just want to chime in. I caught you guys while I was driving home, and I agree with both of you, actually. But the main question is, is the generation gap and the cultural gap. You so have what do you mean? In, yeah, t- tell, me, tell me about this cultural gap and generation gap as you see it. You kind of have to question the teacher that was asking them to pull down the pants. I mean, how old is he? Back in the day, we used to get hit when we were in trouble in school on yeah. the hands. My, the, the, the principal at my school had a piece of driftwood, like, polished right. up. He was proud of it. Exactly. I'm originally from Hawaii, and a lot of kids knew their teachers, not personally. I mean, you know, driving by, it was a small island. So parents expected other parents to watch out for their kids, to clean them up, to tell them get home when they saw they were messing up. And maybe discipline. So, I mean, I've certainly right. seen communica- communities where it's like that. That's right. So the cultural is a little bit different. So you have to question, is this teacher not from Texas? Are they actually from Hawaii where he's used to, to watching other kids and cleaning them up and babying them and making sure that they're doing right or the generation part? So that was just my opinion on it. So there is no right or wrong answer. It's just look into what you guys are actually trying to research as far as the teacher wise and why he did it. Then, of course, you come out here to the mainland, and you got some sickos. I mean, I am flabbergasted half the time when I see that teachers are dating students. Really? Get a grip. (laughs) That's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Mandy, for your call tonight. I do do appreciate it. Uh, Let's talk to Bill. He's in Indianapolis listening to WIBC. Hello, Bill. Hello. Well, guys, hey, a great show. Thanks. I uh, got a comment on this uh, a poop in the gymnasium. Yes, sir. Uh, being a, a doctor and with four young kids, you know, it got my attention. Someone goes to pull my children's pants down, and I want to know why. And so I was just uh, reading an article about uh, a city in Indianapolis. It's called Carmel, Indiana. Are you guys familiar? No. Carmel? No. Car- Carmel, Indiana. Well, they, they have a problem with poop there, but they have um, – it's a problem with their doggy park. And so what they do is you know, it's kind of against the law to have your dogs poop in the doggy park and leave it there. Mm-hmm. And so when that happens, they collect a sample of the poop and they run a DNA scan on it and they find the owner of the dog. How do they what? find the owner of the dog? They have all the dog's <sighs> DNA. They, they, they get a sample of the dog's DNA. <laughs> oh, you know, before my you register goodness. For the so do they pay for these sure. DNA tests through well, the membership or something? The I, I, they I, find I, them. I think it's, it, you find them, and then you also have to pay for the test. Right, okay. so when they find the culprit, they that covers the cost of the DNA test. Okay. Correct, yes. So, you know, if you think about that, maybe it's a stretch to think that a teacher would, would make that kind of, you know, thought, but it occurred to me that maybe they're just not that smart or they really want to look in the kid's pants. That might be inflammatory. But, I think you, you could know, be right about of, that uh, on either case, and that's a, a concern that I have. And and what it, regardless of the reason for it, I don't care what their reason was. It was inappropriate. Don't you agree, Bill? I agree. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's over the line. And... Uh, there are other ways to, to, to figure that out. Thanks for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you with the uh, the medical perspective on the issue. Bill, if you, I would say that if you if you give the DNA of your dog out to you know a government dog park or whatever, that's probably put together by the community. The government probably didn't even want to do that, uh, but you know enough people demanded it. Mm-hmm. And then you get caught, I guess, uh, letting you know not cleaning up after your dog. I think sometimes, you know, there's just mistakes are made. You just don't see what happens. You aren't watching the entire time. You know, you let your dog go someplace and they squat when you're not paying attention or whatever you call that kind of humped over thing dogs do when they go poop. Hunch. (laughs) They hunch. They hunch. (laughs) So funny. And you miss it, right? Like, And I I would feel bad for a person. I don't know what the fine is, including the DNA test or whatever. I would feel bad for a person. Probably a couple hundred bucks would be my guess. Man, that's uh, that's steep for just missing it. There's a DNA test now for 
for dogs that I just found out about recently. I think it's called Wisdom something or other. Anyway, uh, it's like seventy bucks, sixty or sixty or seventy bucks, mm. and that'll tell you the kind of the DNA history, what your dog's made of, that kind of thing. Well, hopefully they're getting a bulk discount or something like that. I think that's too steep for in a dog park, but dog poop being left in a dog park, mm -hmm. right? Like this is where the dogs are. People aren't out there playing uh, ultimate frisbee or something, right? Yeah, that's true. You so, should be watching out there. You now, I mean, it might help get people to, uh, you know, patrol the dog park generally and just pick up whatever's there in the, you know, in case they're hoping that other people do it and in case uh, your dog got, you know, missed. Something. It does seem like a lot of effort to go through to identify an errant poop in the yeah. dog park. In a dog park. Yeah. But it's just dead wrong not to clean up after your dog. I'm no sorry. No doubt. No doubt. I, I would not defend that at all. But at the same time, I don't like the idea of having to give up a sample of DNA of my dog to the state. I don't like the idea of having to license a dog with the state. And here in New Hampshire, that is one of the problems that we have here is that there is a, a dog licensing law at the statutory level, at the at the state level, that authorizes towns, if they wish, to go through the licensing process, I think. I don't think the I don't think the towns are mandated. I but think many it's of them use option. that opportunity yeah, as a fundraising method. Uh, so 855, 450, free. And of course, if you don't do it, then they might steal your dog from you. Because well, that's what governments do. They threaten and they use violence and steal things. 855, 450, free. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy. Until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's TogetherSave.com. TogetherSave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. TogetherSave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at TogetherSave.com. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like, passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com.
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. The live Saturday edition continues with you tonight. It's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget to join us again at freetalklive.com. You can also get on the phones with us here via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Talking about a disturbing story out of Texas where one school gym teacher has demanded and apparently to some level of success gotten students to drop their pants after someone allegedly uh, left a deuce or two on the gym floor and the idea was purportedly to try to identify who the culprit was which by the way wasn't even successful apparently so we really still don't know who the culprit was but beyond that it's a disturbing issue that uh, you know this happened at all uh, the school superintendent did point out that he didn't agree with this and that some sort of disciplinary action would be taken but there's been a variety of opinions on the air here tonight though i think the majority of folks calling in are, are definitely taking the sensible side of this and saying this is inappropriate that it was the gym teacher just trying to cover for their own uh, vandalism well, I don't know who I don't know who did it, but there was a theory earlier that it was actually an adult who was pooping on the the gym floor, and I think that's an interesting theory. But the disturbing uh, position mark that you had taken earlier was that if this were a group of six or seven year olds, that you didn't think that that would necessarily be a problem to do this. And thankfully, a number of people have called in to basically say that you are crazy on this issue and that it's entirely inappropriate for somebody in that position to do that to students. If I of their don't motivation. Try Trust. Uh, if I didn't trust somebody to take care of my son's, uh, you know, excrement issues, my, that person wouldn't be taking care of my son for that period of time uh, during the day. Like, that's part of the deal. I either trust you that much or I don't. Yeah, well, that's great, Mark. But a lot of people go to uh, send their kids to government school and they really don't know uh, the people who are taking care of them. And whether or not you trust someone to handle those issues, I don't think means that you should necessarily be leaving them alone with kids and having them take their pants off. That just seems pretty weird to me, but let's go to you and your thoughts. Brian is listening in Huntsville, Alabama to WBHP. Hello, Brian. Hey, good evening, gentlemen. Hey. I think it's totally 100% out of line. That question, does anybody know that it was human scat or dung on there? But you were talking about dog parks. Yeah. You up dog food. What if you got a big dog? And what if just a kid decides to take it in and dump it on the floor? That's a good or point. Throw it in a plastic bag and then take it into the school. Yeah, this was when they couldn't find the evidence of uh, any kid uh, pooping there. Then I kind of wondered, because this is clearly, it, it seems to me, this is some kind of stunt. And if it's a stunt, are they actually pooping there or are they just bringing it in? Well, I mean, for many, many moons, uh, people have taken dog poop or Cow, cow patties, stuck them in bags, and lit them on on fire in people's porches. Yep. It sounds to me that it'd be much more, well, as juvenile as it would be, they are juveniles, to just bag up some doggy duke and dump it on the floor and run. Indeed. Believable. I, I, I do not think this gym teacher, unless he's proven that it's human, I don't think he did his homework before he did this. And even if he did, no, you don't look at my kids' butts. 
I'm with you, Brian. Over Thanks for the call tonight. Good call. Good Thanks one. for making it. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. We've got Jim. He's in Indianapolis listening to WIBC. Hey, Jim. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Uh, just a quick question. Did, what was the outcome? Did they find anything? Negative. No, nothing we can tell. Nothing. Okay. And there was no touching. It was just a visual inspection. Not yep, clear. As I understand that. it. Presumably yep. just visual. Okay. There's really nothing wrong with that. You okay with that? If a, yeah. If a person did it, it may be termed for doing something again. So you're all, just to be clear, you're all right with a teacher at school demanding that your ten-year-old drop his or her pants in front of them for an inspection. Sure. Do you, I don't believe it. Does it bother you that, um, like, there this was more than a dozen kids? Does it bother you that at least eleven, at at the very least, if there's a dozen kids that uh, uh, you know, eleven of them are not guilty and had to, you know, deal with this ignominity? They proved their innocence. They didn't. All they did was prove innocence. Jim, thanks for your call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Alma in Tallahassee, listening to WVFT FM. Hello, hey, Alma. Sweetie. You know, uh, parents should have been called in immediately before all it happened. Just put them over to the side and call the parents. Doesn't that seem a little excessive? I mean, to call in all the parents because someone who is unknown... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. This is really freaky to me. I don't know kids like that, and I don't want to. I would, but, I mean, If I were a parent, first of all, I wouldn't be sending my kids to government school. But secondly, well, if— I home, Wait. I yeah. homeschooled my last, my last child because I've been through the school system. I'm 60. And when my brother was in the first grade and I was in the second, he, he had a bad habit of wetting himself. And they called me in to change him myself. They wouldn't do it. They handed me clothes, and I, I went into the boys' bathroom and changed him. But I can tell you, my do- youngest daughter, which she'll be 40 this week, sh- in the third grade, she was locked up in a closet at school. School is crazy. Yeah, that's not okay. School yeah, is ho- I agree with you. Crazy. There's some really disturbing stuff that goes on for punishments well, we don't at government know who's school. who's watching your children. Uh, that, that much is true. That's a good reason. to. There are all kinds of good reasons to not send your kids to government school. I can One, tell you, yeah. and the same daughter... She had a real bad problem. I didn't know what was wrong with her. She had to go to the bathroom. I kept writing notes. Let her go to the bathroom when she needed to. She was in middle school. Mm-hmm. Come to find out, she had to have a major operation. She had some female problems. And I had tied up with these people. I have tied up with people so much that when I had my son at 38, I said, he will not go to government school. Oh, it's a bad thing. Good for you, Alma, and thank you for the call tonight. Let's continue. We've got because I agree with you. I mean, if if you've got kids, really do everything you can to keep them out of government schools. Not just because this could happen, but there's all kinds of reasons why not to send kids. Well, to honestly, school. I went to private school uh, part of the time, and I'm not a huge fan of that either. I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't find any real any any big difference other than they talk about the Bible in the school I went to. Like there just wasn't that much difference. Now you had. You know, when this when there's 600 students in the uh, in the school and everybody pays a tuition, you're a valuable customer at that point, and so your opinion has uh, more weight than in, if you're a parent of a child who's uh, you know in high school and there's 2,000 kids in the high school and then you don't like how they've treated it. It's like so what? All of these uh, all these inmates will treat them how the how we wish. I mean, they it's th- there's not much you can do except uh, compare school to prison in many ways. I would be willing to bet that a private school might be a little more stringent in how they handle this situation. It sounds like this gym teacher is going to get a maybe a verbal lashing over this issue. They might issue a memo or something like that, and maybe that person would be a lost. You know, it might be a lost job at a private school. I think they probably talk to the parents, the parents of the kids that uh, were involved in this and ask them what they wanted done. Mm. Um, yeah, that's not a bad idea because I, you know, I, I, I don't know how my gym teacher would have uh, handled this uh, from the private school, but he was kind of a rough customer. You know, like he, I don't, uh, be, he was stern. I guess is the best term. I can come up with him. And so wouldn't surprise me. But I mean, people loved this guy, right? Mm-hmm. Like he he won basketball games and he, uh, you know, the, the parents just loved him. So I don't know if he did this, what they would say in those circumstances. We got Dave. He's in Poughkeepsie, New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Dave. Hi, guys. How you doing? What's on your mind tonight, Dave? 
I am pretty much pissed off at a certain company. It's called Shadow Shopper. I've been trying to get a job with them for like, I don't know how long because, you know, I'm just like, when, when I, I've been emailing them in big, large, red font, angry letters. <laughs> I want to know, I want to know how much am I going to be paid per hour? And the guy always too funny, like, oh, well, this company pays. I'm like, no, 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 no. I want to know how much I'm going to be paid per Dave, hour. There's you no, know? Re- there's no wonder why they're not giving you a job. You're being an a-hole. <laughs> Because I, because I need a job with that. Because I'm, I'm looking for a you job with that. You don't get a job to... by pressuring somebody into giving it to you. You don't get a job by writing them in large red font, yelling at them, <laughs> and demanding to know why it is you haven't gotten the job yet. If I, I want to know person, how much I'm going to be paid per hour. You're not going say, to get oh, paid this, anything. This, 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 I hate to this, break this, this to this, you. This guy pays this. This guy pays that. Because I want to know how much. If I if I'm going to work with them, I want to know how much I'm going to be paid per hour. Dave, newsflash. You're not going to get paid by this place. They're, are you working uh, now, Dave? Hire you. Do you. Are you working now? No, I'm not. Well, why don't you just try working for them for whatever? If if they're if they're saying this this group pays this and this group pays that, they're a broker. Why don't you just try working for them for a week and see what you get paid? He's not going to get hired. He's been he's been writing maybe threatening so, letters to the recruiter. Maybe so or maybe not. I'm trying to come up with a system uh, for There's him. There's a system. You apply for the job and then you patiently follow up maybe once after a week and ask nicely, hey, have you had a chance to review my application? Because I wonder really how much I'm going to be paid per hour. I, I've heard that. Dave, you they don't find that, that stuff out until you get hired or right beforehand. Thanks for the call tonight. Good luck. <laughs> You're going to need it. 855 450 free. You can take control here. If you've got any job tips you want to give Dave, you're welcome to call in. Coming up, the Silk Road, uh, the Pirate Bay. We're going underground. It's Free Talk Live. How fast are new Allegra gel caps? I didn't know you got a cap fast. How strong are new Allegra gel caps? Ten more logs to go strong. Non-drowsy Allegra gives you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms in just one hour, two times faster than Claritin, and stays strong for 24 hours. It's relief when the pollen's off the chart strong, even in the convertible. New Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster. Nothing's stronger. Guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. Use only as directed. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 30th, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,258, silver $16.94, and Bitcoin is trading around $243.35. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Your job, your home, your car, your money. All these things provide you with a sense of security. But what about your family security? What have you done to prepare if all of these things were suddenly gone? eFoods Direct has the food security you need for every emergency. 
eFoods Direct is food security. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for 50% off their food preparation planning packs. In the news. Arrest Henry Kissinger for war crimes! Arrest Henry Kissinger for war crimes! While appearing before the Senate Armed Forces Committee, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger was confronted by protesters calling for his arrest. Activists with Code Pink interrupted the proceedings, holding a banner and carrying handcuffs. Senator John McCain referred to the protesters as low-life scum when demanding that Capitol Police remove them. If we can't get the Capitol Hill Police in here immediately, McCain apologized to Kissinger. I have never seen anything as disgraceful and outrageous and despicable. Ross Ulbricht trial, day nine, as the jury heard testimony from former FBI agent Ilwan Yum who testified about the role he played in seizing and analyzing Silk Road servers in Bitcoin. Also of significance yesterday, the government began the story of a Silk Road vendor who threatened to release the names of thousands of user identities if Dread Pirate Roberts would not pay him $700,000. It was this threat that would lead Dread Pirate Roberts, as shown to the jury on Torchat, to tell a member of Hells Angels Canada that he wanted to see his blackmailer executed. As the tension rose, the day's proceedings came to an end, just before the government laid out the details of the alleged murder-for-hire arrangement. It was apparent that the prosecution was raising that evidence just before they rested their case. The Liberty Beats John Bush, covering the trial in New York, says that judging by the faces of the jurors, that aspect of the case may have an impact on their decisions. The Liberty Beats continuing trial coverage continues next week. See thelibertybeat.com for details on how you can help keep that coverage happening. Support for the Liberty Beat Silk Road trial coverage comes from the Free State Project, where thousands of liberty-loving activists are moving to New Hampshire, including Ross Ulbricht's mother, Lynn. Get 101 reasons to move into an amazing and growing community of awesome libertarians and voluntarists at freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 30th, 2015. Check out the website at libertybeat.com. The U.S. Senate Thursday afternoon approved a bill to complete the construction of the Keystone XL pipeline. The bill passed with a vote of 62-36, including support from both Democrats and Republicans. The pipeline, which would run from Canada's indigenous lands through Nebraska and into Texas, has been heavily debated for six years. President Obama has stated he will veto the bill. Indigenous communities in Panama's Gabe Bugle region will be meeting with Panama's vice president and government officials after giving the government a deadline to cancel a planned hydroelectric dam. The indigenous communities warned the government they would take forceful measures if President Varea did not cancel the project by February 15th. The community members say the Barro Blanco project would affect more than 2,000 families. Victoria Nuland, the Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs, condemned Russian state news agency RT and its, quote, tiny, tiny audience over recent coverage of the conflict in Ukraine. Nuland said the media agency spews lies about who's responsible for the violence in Ukraine. While speaking at a Brookings Institution event in Washington, D.C., the Assistant Secretary said the Russian media was lying when it reported the Ukrainian army was representing NATO's interests and also denied claims that Ukraine was behind a rocket strike that killed 30 civilians. This broadcast of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, comedy-minded and liberty-focused. Live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, January 30th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Everyone needs to get a justice shed. So you have a place to throw that little juvenile delinquent you caught loitering out on the street corner. This is not rocket science, people. I just call up my neighbors, Frank and Terry. We get out there with baseball bats, fishing nets, and we knock that suspect out. And we toss him in our justice shed. We just start dealing out some shovel beatings. That's democracy, people. That's the biggest benefit of the justice shed, people. You are in charge. Our justice shed was all filled up, so we created this justice cage. It's just as good. 
These guys, I think we caught them shoplifting. And this is my daughter's boyfriend. Uh, look, if you don't have a yard big enough to place a justice shed in, go out and get yourself a justice barrel. I don't care. The important thing is to take control of your safety by any means necessary. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. The Pirate Bay is back, plus the Silk Road. We've got uh, news about, or not really news, an opinion piece over at Forbes, where one of their authors is saying there's no evidence that dark web, dark web drug sites like the Silk Road help reduce violence. And I firmly disagree, uh, but we can talk about that further if we get the chance. Your calls, of course, come first here with you tonight on this live Saturday edition. You've got me, Ian. And Mark. And we're going to go right back into your calls. But real quick to bring you up to speed, if you're just tuning in, we've had a major topic that's sort of been arching over the whole show tonight, and that has been this disturbing story out of Texas where elementary school students were were told to take down their pants after someone had been pooping, allegedly, in the gym uh, at this school. And the teacher has is apparently going to be disciplined in some way for doing this. But uh, the discussion was more on the air about, you know, is this appropriate? I said absolutely not appropriate, not appropriate at any age. Mark, you said that there would be some ages at which you thought this would be appropriate and that you, if you were, you know, if you wanted to send your kid to a school, that you would only do it where you trusted the people. And I think that, uh, you know, even if you do trust somebody, you still don't want to necessarily have your child disrobing in front of that person um, simply because you really just don't know. Right. Like, I'm sure a lot of the people that have discovered that their uncle or whoever was molesting their kids were probably surprised by it, thinking that they could trust their own brother uh, to not do things like that. So even if you trust somebody, it's still a good idea to tell your kids, hey. Don't take your pants off for anybody but the doctor or, you know, mom and dad. Or yeah, I think like I that. was referring to kindergarten situations here where I remember in my kindergarten class, they had a bathroom in the kindergarten. And the kindergarten teacher helped a little girl who had an accident mm -hmm. that was there. It was a scandal. It was a scandal. Was it? Oh, absolutely. The little girl had an accident in kindergarten. It was a scandal. Are you joking? No, I'm telling you that on the, on the kindergarten level, it was a scandal. Okay. <laughs> like we, oh my, she went in her, uh, you know, in her panties or whatever, mm. and the teacher helped her out with it. I don't think the teacher's a molester uh, because she helped this little girl into some better situation. Yeah, that's a. I think that's a different situation. If you actually do have a child that's had an accident and something needs to be cleaned up, obviously something has to happen. Yes, there. but you're saying that uh, I shouldn't trust these people. I shouldn't trust anybody, and you got to be able to trust them. That's it. No, I don't think so. I think that the best thing to do is to trust your kids to not go ahead and disrobe for a teacher upon demand, because then you're creating. If if you allow people in authority to get away with this, then you, you know, you're not, a but few, with this not is just, something different than with, uh, what I'm talking about. I'm you're talking not more than a few steps away from having some cop do it or whoever else is in a position of authority. If they, if it's okay to have the teacher tell them to take their pants off for whatever reason, then it's okay to have a cop do it, or it's okay to have the principal do it. And I think none of that's okay. I've told this story before, um, on the air and it, it's, you know, it, I think back to it relatively often uh this i was camping in florida went up to see some uh, caves uh, up in northern florida mm -hmm. and a little boy comes into the bathroom it was at a campground yeah and he has to use the bathroom and he wants some help he asks me for help i stop think say I'm going to try to find your parents, but there's, I like look outside the bathroom. There's, you know, this, this is a little boy, maybe he's like three or four or something like that. Okay. And he's coming into the bathroom by himself and I don't see any parents anywhere near, uh, nearby. I want to help this little kid. Yep. I can't. He begins to wet himself in the bathroom. Oh, no. And he he made it to the bathroom like he was yep. he should by all accounts have been safe. Now you know that there's a certain level of shame with the bathroom wedding thing. But the reason I didn't help that little boy was because I was afraid that I was going to be there pulling on the zipper of some strange three year old right. in the bathroom when his, his dad, dad comes, comes in. in right. <laughs> um, and uh, a you, totally reasonable concern. Right, that's a reasonable concern. And but the dad would have reason to be concerned about what you were doing. As the well. right 
just and loving thing to have done in that circumstance was to help that little boy go to the bathroom because he asked for it. But we live in such a twisted, mm. sick culture that I couldn't do that. I couldn't do the right thing by this child who felt this shame in this bathroom because of sick weirdos who make such a big deal about this stuff. Like it's all, every, all the rest of you people, you people mm -hmm. who touch little boys, little girls, you people who care about people who touch little boys and little girls, you're all twisted. It's all you're perversion. You're the only one who's regular. I'm the only one left That's who's right. not messed up. <laughs> Let's go to Natalie listening to WPG in New Jersey. Hello, Natalie. Hello. Hey, you're on the air. Go I ahead. I think the issue is to teach children self-discipline. I raised three children now in their 20s and 30s. They went to a private school where the policy was self-discipline and also public school where the code was in two-inch two inch thick books and referred to more codes, including due process. My children would never have complied to that request. Um, they were taught to report to me anything unusual, and I kept a daily calendar log. Also, I taught them not to go into a closed area with any teacher or administrator without me present. And furthermore, today I work with the elderly in health care and recognize a need for um, disease control. Yeah, I'm with you. One thing that concerns me, I, I, I like what you have to say here. It concerns me to send my child to a school where I feel like I have to, um, you know, warn them about all the people that, uh, that may be out to get them. Like, don't go in there with the administrators without advising me. I, I, I'm just I'm concerned about sending. That's this good is, advice. I mean, not just it's because good advice. Might, this not, is the reason that I homeschool my kids. Yeah. Because I, I think it's good. I think this is good advice, I, and that's the reason I homeschool my kids. Yeah, not just because the administrator might want to touch them in some sort of inappropriate manner, but also because the administrator might ask them questions, and then if they're asked questions, they might answer them and you know and sort of being, uh, possibly convict themselves of some sort of school crime uh, i think it's a good idea to not talk to the administrators i wish i had been that you know that informed when i was a kid uh natalie anything else you want to share I, yeah i just think that your guy there like um should decide when he thinks that child should make the transition into the real world what do you mean by that um I mean, my children were highly gifted, and they had learning um, disabilities, so we had issues with, like, tape recorders and teachers, you know, having to accept tape recorders and whatnot in classrooms um, as to what was going on. But, um, you know, I mean, you can't always protect your child. So to me, the, the core issue is not about trust. It's about teaching them self-discipline. And, you know, when they're little... And even when they're teenagers, I mean, you know, when they're underage, you know, you're as the parent, you're supposed to protect them. And um, the only way I had to protect my kids is telling them to report anything unusual to me. And if I'm I not scolding issues, you, I'm not. I think that you did the best with what you could in that circumstance. And Natalie, thanks yeah, for but the I went through a lot. I believe I, you. You know, I worked hard in the public school system. I believe I you did. Process hearings. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of parents don't do it. I mean, they don't know their rights. That's and, true I mean, as well. In this case, I mean, these people should get together and, and uh, do a class action suit against them. Natalie, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing Thank from you. you. The toll free number is 855 450 free. Let's go to Amy listening to WIBC in Indianapolis. Hey, Amy. Hello. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Oh, um, I was just calling comment about the um, shadow shopping guy who is trying to get a job. Yeah. yeah. And Shadow Shopper. I think com. his yeah, his big issue is they don't pay by the hour. They pay by the assignment. I do assignments ah. for them and they are a real place. Like I get paid mm -hmm. and you get paid per assignment and if you're and if you have to like buy something in the store they reimburse then they you. reimburse you up to Person amount. What do they do? What do they want to know about the stores that you go and do shopping in? What 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 are their questions? Um, I mean, what are, what are you trying to achieve? Usually, in okay, analyzing they customer give service. You a list. Yeah, they give me a list per assignment of like which um, department I need to like shop in or walk through. So, say I need produce, frozen, and meat. I'm supposed to um, 
go to each department, see if they have someone in that department to help, look how clean it is, if the food is fresh, if the employee offered to help me, if I seemed like I needed help. How long have you been doing things this? Things like that. Um, About nine months now. Would you call it yourself a tough to- inspector? Uh, Well... Kind of, but I'm fair. You know, I'm, okay. you have to be honest. So I think it's know, great. I love, I love the time. secret shopper. I think it's a smart thing. Yeah. And uh, and thanks for the call, Amy. And I it's a real job. Yeah, so. I, th- I think it's great. He's I think just, it's good work. I think his just Hang approach. on, there's more coming up here. Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. Writing the U.S. Constitution was no easy task. In the blazing heat of summertime Philadelphia, delegates spent 115 days debating complicated issues of representation and federal authority. The document they ultimately crafted offered a radical change in the way government is structured, one capable of taxing and regulating citizens directly and operating its own military. Many worried these new powers could erode state authority and individual rights. Many refused to ratify the Constitution until a Bill of Rights was added to protect individual liberties and limit federal power. What led to the Constitution's creation in 1787 was the shared desire by all delegates for a document that protected individual liberty and whose provisions for the new government would, in the words of James Madison, oblige it to control itself. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. You know how annoying it is when someone keeps stopping mid-sentence as though he or she were asking you a series of questions? Avoid doing that. It sounds unnervingly tentative, and it imposes upon the listener to help you complete the thought. And if you're a job seeker, this alone could be a deal killer. An effective communicator sounds more confident. Complete the thought. Avoid making the listener impatient. With money and attention so scarce now, Effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter, rather than blending into the blah, 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 will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Survivalspeech.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. 
live Saturday edition of the program. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You can connect to that. Oh, and if you haven't sent a contact request, do that first. After that is approved, you can then call us on Skype anytime you want. You almost sounded like one of those uh, radio pukers there when you did that uh, intro. The live Saturday edition of Free Talk that Live. Wasn't, wasn't my intention. No, no. That's uh, That was really hip uh, like two decades ago to sound like that. Anyway, on Free Talk Live, uh, we talk about investing in gold and silver as either a hedge against inflation or an investment or a barter currency, whatever you think is a good idea. Um, you know, I'm right now believing that silver is underpriced and that it could move upward, but you got to look for yourself. It, you just go to gold.freetalklive.com to get great prices, uh, great service from Midas Resources. We make it easy for you. I've done much a great deal of business with uh, Midas Resources over the course of like 10 years. So go over there, check them out. It's gold.freetalklive.com. Before you buy gold from anybody else, you certainly should check it there first. Gold.freetalklive.com. All right, continuing with your calls and thoughts, we've got Colin in Baltimore. You're on Free Talk Live listening via TuneIn. Hello, Colin. Yeah, hey, guys. How are we going? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Well... Okay, I, I listen to Free Talk Live a lot. I've been listening to since like 2013, and I hear Dave calling in all the time, and every single time he's always screaming or or really angry about something, and, and he's always angry about things that really don't even matter in the long run. Like, for example, he just called in and talked about how the guy would email him back on how much he was going to make per hour and then some girl called in and then said he didn't even get paid per hour. And right. and then, yeah, and, and he's probably not even going to get the job now, now that he badgered the guy and sent him, yeah. you know, all these <laughs> There's emails. no way Dave is going to yeah. get this job. Well, I, I you yeah. know, I would really, if I, had, if I ran a company and I got some kind of, uh, you know, secret shopper report from Dave, I, I'd be like, I don't. First off, I would wonder what that would report would look like. I'd be really, I'd love to be looking over the shoulder of the business person that receives this report from Dave, right? Because you know, is it uh, is it a bunch of check boxes or does he have to write something? Because that should be really interesting. I think it's mix typically. So know? if he's got to write things, then what does this look like? You know, it's and be a mess, right? It's going to be a mess, a chicken scratch mess. You know, because I don't, I don't know if I want somebody who's probably somewhere close to clinically insane doing some se secret right. shopper for me. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And, you know, and I think, and, and another thing, I know he's going to call back tomorrow. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna be very, very, very mad at us. Yeah, and, and mad at me. And, and he's probably not even going to remember my name. And he's going to be like, this guy called up last night, and he, and he may be really mad. And it's like, well, what doesn't make you mad? Dave? Well, right, Dave seems to like to be mad. He loves to be persecuted. He's, uh, I don't know if it's a complex or whatever that he has, but... Uh, he's always got something going wrong, going wrong, or something that he's mad about in his life, and really, he's the root of all of it. He's the cause of it all. He's the one who's actually the angry person. Who, and this is a great lesson for all of us, right? Like, if uh, you know, if you're constantly Dave. getting upset, maybe it's not the people in your life. Right? Maybe it's you. Hey, Colin, anything else you want to share? Yeah, um, it just must suck to walk around that pissed off all the time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Colin. I appreciate it. Well, of course, some people wonder whether or not people like Dave or uh, other frequent callers to the show are actually real. You know, is Dave really Dave or is he kind of putting on a show for us? <laughs> Uh, you'll never really know the answers to those questions. But I can tell you, Dave, is if he's not real, he's damn dedicated to the character. <laughs> because unlike some of our callers who don't have a library of videos <laughs> yes. that you can go and reference on YouTube, we do have that for Dave. And well, what about all the people that troll him on the internet too? Like he's got a he's got a parcel of people that follow him about yeah, on true. the internet and go to different places because he's made them so upset. Yeah, right, we'll continue with your calls about what you want. We've got Stephen on the line in Indianapolis listening to WIBC. Hey Stephen. Hi Mark. Hi and how are you guys tonight? Good. Go ahead, sir. Well, I want to say I respect both your opinions, and everybody likes a good mystery pooping, but I think you're missing the big picture. All right. <laughs> Nobody likes it as much as I do. It could be 
a racially motivated hate pooping. It and could I be. think we need to get the Justice Department. Yeah, it could be a hate pooping. And I think we need to get the Justice Department involved, get Eric Holder out there, <laughs> maybe the Reverend. Yep. And well, let's get to the bottom of this. I'll no tell you, intent. nothing's going to fix this like a bullhorn will fix this. That is correct. I mean, we could have marches in the street. We need to figure out if it is a racially motivated hate pooping. I think that's exactly right. Thank you Thank so much. you, Stephen. For good call. I appreciate yeah. it. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. Let's get to the bottom of this. A butt joke. Let's go to Dana. I don't know, but it smells. In Grand Rapids. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Dana. Hi, guys. Hey. Ian, you had a good point. Dave, is if, if he's not for real, he's brilliant and definitely dedicated to the craft. Yeah, yeah. And uh, since the Oscars are coming up, I know it's too late. The nominations are already done, but <laughs> I would nominate him. But um, I wanted to— I think he's a better people's choice kind of guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good point, good point. <laughs> I want to I wanna address this Jim incident. I think, Mark, I think you're both right in this sense. Ian, it sounds like you're thinking in today's terms, and Mark, like myself, I went to 12 years of private education, and um, and Mark, it sounds like he, he's going back to back when it was more safe. And my I don't think it was more safe. Hold on a second. I don't think it was no, more was safe in the past. No, I was going to address that. Okay, go ahead. No, right, because I'm a Roman Catholic, so my education was you know, Catholic. And now we know the scandals, what was really happening. And these were parents who were involved, you know, in CPA and the church, and some of their kids were abused by the priests. And they trusted those priests, too. And they trusted them, yes. And they slapped their kids' faces or told them, don't you ever say such filth out of your Mm. mouth again, telling me the priest, right. And I was upset. I didn't leave. I'm not leaving my faith because those are individuals and not the faith. Yes. That being said, um, Mark is right in on this this very valid point. You're handing your kids over to go to school, whether it's public or private. You have to have some kind of trust in them, not only about issues like this, but you're handing their brain over to oh, them. Oh, yeah, it's a huge problem. Taught. And so, yes, and I so admire these homeschoolers because, you know, these kids that are they're graduating at 14 and 15 from high school. Sure. And they're, they're, they're brilliant. These kids are really bright. Cause, and pardon my grammar, I'm doing it intentionally. Ain't nobody going to love or care about your kids and love your kid or their education better than their parents. That's absolutely true. And so true. the parents are brilliant teachers. But I, I see both of your points as valid. Ian, you're more in the day because we're hearing about so much abuse. And because I'm similar to you, you two, you guys' ages, um, I know that's improper grammar, but we're thinking of all the stuff that's going on now, and we're thinking, oh, I don't think I'd want this to be done. But I want to propose something. Okay. You know how um, uh, you know, uh, two income families have these things called nanny cams? They're relatively inexpensive. Why wouldn't the school have bought a nanny cam to? A lot of schools already have security uh, cameras set up. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this school's just kind of behind the times there, Dana. Thanks for the call tonight. Good good idea, though. Uh, Yeah, I mean, these cameras are dirt cheap these days. There's really no reason not to have security systems. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy. Until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's TogetherSave.com. TogetherSave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. TogetherSave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at TogetherSave.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. 
Free Talk Live. You guys live in a dream world. No, sir, you're the one that lives in a dream world. You're the one that wants to have a police state in America where you get to determine who can come in and who can't. You want to have you border patrols. You want to have checkpoints. This, you want to let the entire third world into this country? Sir, let me get, let, I'll answer that question by reading you a want- short excerpt from a poem. Maybe you've heard of it. It happens up here at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It was Give about... Your poor, your tired, tired, huddled masses. Great, right. you are you aware of it, yes. Let them come in legally, legally. Well, okay, come on, the legally, <laughs> Lou. The legal is such a cop out. No, hold on a second, because when your ancestors came across, and I don't know what they are, let's say they're Italian. When your ancestors came across, all they did was take you to Ellis Island, screw up your last name, sit you around for three days, and then bam, you're out the door. Now legal is a huge pile of paperwork and tens of thousands of dollars. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here to bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. And coming up, the New Hampshire Liberty Forum is right around the corner. It's going to be here before you know. We're just about a month away at this point. You can go to nhlibertyforum.com to learn more about this amazing event that we have the privilege of attending and broadcasting from every single year. It's March 5th through the 8th, and this year... It's going to be in a new hotel, the Radisson in Manchester. You know how I hate it when they change things, but this sounds like it's going to be really good. You've been to this hotel before, Mark. Yes, I have. Uh, we they actually, have the comic book convention there. Correct. We we went to that, um, and it's a big hotel. The convention space is much larger there than it was at the old hotel. Now, mm-hmm. the old hotel was great, but this it's a growing event, and it needed new digs. And so they moved it to the right you know the biggest place they could possibly move it to at this point, and the, it's nice that it's right in Manch too because people fly in, they're flying into Manchester. Yeah, very convenient. So I think it's a good move, and I'm excited about it. March fifth through eighth, we're going to be there broadcasting live. All kinds of great speakers. I think uh, uh, there's a number of p- keynotes this year that you might be interested in. Patrick Byrne from Overstock.com, the guy who made history when he became the first billion dollar company or billion plus dollar company to accept Bitcoin. 
Uh, so he'll be there talking. Uh, Jeffrey Tucker is speaking again. He's keynoting this year, so I'm sure we'll have him on uh, to co-host Free Talk Live. It's and always great. Ben Swan is going to be there as well, plus uh, probably several dozen other featured speakers that you can go and learn more about over at nhlibertyforum.com. But there's a special offer, Mark, that uh, I was made aware of that may just be for Free Talk Live listeners at this point. Oh, I'm really? Not, I'm not sure if it's available to anyone else because the, the way you have to take advantage of it is a little bit circuitous. So pay attention as I give you the steps. Here's what you do to get free admission to the Liberty Forum. What? Free admission to the Liberty Forum. Now, admission to the Liberty Forum is not necessarily a cheap thing. I mean, if you were to go and uh, and sign up for it, it might be like a hundred bucks or maybe more. I mean, sometimes there's like there's different packages, right? So right. there's there's like the package that gives you all the meals. This isn't the meals package. You don't get the meals package for free. You just get kind of like a basic admission ticket to the event. If you register or if you uh, re- reserve a room for all three nights, so. The Liberty Forum is running from March 5th through the 8th. That's a Thursday through a Sunday. So for so Thursday, there's one ticket per room, per room registration for three nights? Correct. Thursday, okay. Friday, Saturday night. You reserve a room for three nights. You get a ticket free to the Liberty Forum. But here's how you have to do it. You've got to reserve your room using the discount code LF2015 for Liberty Forum 2015. That kind of puts you in their room block. That yep. way the hotel knows you're with the Liberty Forum. I suspect what's going on here is the they have a certain number yep. of res, uh, reservations that they want to hit in order to get a certain discount on the rooms from the hotel. Sounds like it. But uh, um, also another thing that's to, to point out here is is this uh, this may pay for your meals on this one is is that generally there are people that are looking to sort of split a room mm-hmm. that are there. So if you, you can probably just sort of make an arrangement with somebody for you know half the cost of the room or something like that, and then that'll cover your meals too. So, Just a guess. Yeah, there's there's ways to work this, that's for sure. But uh, so you get free. Yeah, I'd be all over this if I wasn't getting a free admission, ticket. <laughs> uh, LF 2015. Use that when you reserve the room. But then what you have to do to get the free ticket to the event is to actually email me. So email me at ian at freetalklive.com and include your name that you want on your ticket. Uh, if it's different, for instance, from the one that's uh, on the reservation. But also let us know what the name is on your reservation. That way they can look you up and verify that, yes, indeed, you have indeed reserved that room. And uh, and then make sure your email address is included, which it will be because you're emailing me. And I'll pass that information along to the event organizer. That's it. Is that easy enough? Yeah, that's it's not too too hard. So I, for free room for free ticket, it's worth it. You've got it's less than hundred bucks. Yeah, you've got less than two weeks to take advantage of this. This deal expires on the twelfth of February. So uh, get her done over at uh, and learn more about the event over at nhlibertyforum.com. And again, that's a special offer. Uh, I don't know if it's being offered anywhere else, but it's pretty damn special. They've never done that before. No. Uh, so let's continue with your calls and thoughts here and go to Nick listening in Indianapolis to WIBC. Hello, Nick. <clears throat> hey there. How's it going, guys? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? So um, I heard a commercial earlier or like a crime report um, concerning um, a, a spree of crimes at Walmart. Um, I'm not sure if it was on your show or a commercial or what it was. And they were asking for people's opinions and asking, um, and, and the cops were asking um, them for any tips. And I just think that's wrong because Walmart, um, while they are some of, you know, the biggest robbers in the country. Hold on a second. Um, Wait, before you go on. Yes. What's, mm-hmm. okay, so some crimes were committed at Walmart and. Um, I think there's been, like, a mass theft, like, the same person in a truck um, is what they said, and they are attempting to find uh, tips. And you're claiming uh, that you think Walmart okay. has so robbed people? So, first off, people? If, if you heard it on the air, it has nothing to do with us because there's lots of things that are okay. played sort of in the breaks. Yeah, we but, didn't do that. But, okay. yeah, so what yeah, do you yeah. think that Walmart has stolen from people? Well, I think they're thieves when it comes to the way they treat their employees and also um they're just capitalist monsters okay so So, let me ask you this i've got a driveway it needs to be uh uh shoveled of snow i offer you uh five dollars to do it you agree you're not a capitalist monster i'm not no why because you're not dealing with billions and billions of dollars oh i have less money than walmart yes so 
you think that morality is based on the amount of money you have. So if you have more, you should pay more? No, but if you yes. have more, you should treat that money with more, um, you know, you should think about how you use your money a little bit more, possibly. Well, um, I mean, sure. they are thinking about it. They're mm -hmm. they're paying their employees, you know, what they can get employees at. Right, I, and using see, the what word are the things about Walmart? Wage. Well, wait a minute. Using the word thievery when associating it with Walmart and an employee, you know, employer employee insults people who've been stolen from is ridiculous <laughs> uh, because the people who are working for Walmart volunteer voluntarily chose to work there. Well, they, they choose every day to work right, there, and they know what the they're right. getting paid, and so it's not thievery because when you steal from someone they don't consent mm -hmm. to it hence the def you know that's why it's called thieving uh, because it's non-consensual right well i think that the system in which we live in um and in which the capitalist system in which we live in um as perpetuated by walmart forces people to make these decisions Okay. Um, well, hold on. Right you know, Walmart. Walmart just started recently. I, I I grew up in a world without Walmart, and I'm 44. Um, so I'm not the the yeah. oldest guy you're gonna meet. Walmart is a product of the system. I wouldn't call this system capitalism. I would call it corporatism or mercantilism. But that's fine. And we'll yeah, use yeah. whatever term you wish. To me, yeah, capitalism I, is I just people making deals with each other and the government not being involved. But I, I, what my biggest problem is is that the government is involved in these circumstances, and Walmart is able to get away with paying their employees less because you and I and rich people are forced to pay into a government system that then gives out, uh, you know, welfare and these sorts of things that many employees who work at Walmart must avail themselves of because they don't make enough money. Um, I have a bigger problem with that because there would be more what we call upward pressure on uh, wages if that system wasn't in place. But Walmart's not stealing anything from anybody as evidenced by the fact that their employees choose to go there every day. There I used to other work at yeah. Kmart. Was I being taken advantage of? If you what? I'm I was sorry. working at Kmart for a good chunk of my younger life. Was I being taken advantage of by some capitalist pigs? Um, I would say yes, indirectly. Um, yeah, but the thing is, you're wrong because I wasn't forced. You said people are forced into this situation. That's not true. I wasn't forced to go and work at Kmart. I chose to go and work at Kmart. I wanted to go and work at Kmart. That was the job that I yeah, actually yeah. wanted to get. Because they had an electronics right. department, and that's where I wanted to work, and I was able to work there. I've got an awesome job um, now. Uh, life stuck, sucked when I was washing dishes. But, you know, I, if I don't feel like coming to work one night, um, there's going to be a lot of people that are disappointed. Are those people really. exploiting me? Oh, I'm much better than you are at this. <laughs> much better than you are at this. Hey, those Nick, people uh, are exploiting me. I'm exploited yep. by my listeners. Thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> call right, any other fun. night. Uh, call, yeah, call I want to hear more. The, yeah, call during the week, because I'd like to talk about this further. But we've got a lot of people who want to get in here tonight, and I want to make sure get to as many as possible. More coming up. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Yeah? Did you want to see me, sir? Well, I did, but now that I do, I'm not so sure. Sir? Johnson, I got a mission for you that could change your life. Oh, good, sir. It involves traveling halfway around the world without so much as half a clue of where you're going or what you're going to do when you get there. Situation normal, sir? Uh-huh. Right, I'll be leading this mission, Johnson, so I'll be telling you what to do. You, sir? That's right, Johnson, and I say first things first. Oh, good plan, sir. Yeah, and what I say is first is food. Always remember that, Johnson. Food is a big deal. Sir, my brother-in-law can get us a really good deal on some surplus MREs. Johnson, if you've got half a brain and that empty head of yours, you'll call the 
freeze-dry guy like I did. That food is better for you, it rehydrates faster, and it's good, Johnson. And it keeps for up to 30 years. Will we be gone that long, sir? Well, I hope not. Now get your supplies organized and meet me down to the pier at dawn on Sunday. We sail at sunrise. Yes, sir. This adventure is brought to you by the freeze-dry guy. Call 866-404-3663 or visit freezedryguy.com. Are you drinking too much and it's destroying your life? If you're ready to quit drinking, we have a real solution for you that can help you quit drinking within hours. That's right. We can help you quit drinking within hours. It's not magic. It's medical science. At Sober Time, we'll show you how this simple 20-minute outpatient medical procedure will turn off your cravings within hours. Let's face it. If you don't crave a drink, you're not going to drink. And if you don't drink, you won't get drunk. The medication is FDA approved and covered by most major insurance plans. So if you're really ready to stop drinking and get your life back, call Sober Time now for a free consultation. Patients have nearly an 85% success rate. So here's the number. Call right now. 800-659-0267-800-659-0267-800-659-0267-800-659-0267. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Maybe enough time for you. If you're already on the line, we'll uh, do our best to get you in here. If you're not and you didn't get in tonight, well, no worries. We do the show seven nights a week. You can join us tomorrow night for the live Sunday edition when we will be here yet again uh, from 7 to 10 at night Eastern time. Maybe that's not when we're on the air on your local radio station. Some stations delay broadcast the show. But I can assure you that we are live from 7p to 10p Eastern time. That's correct. So if you want to participate in the show, do call during those hours, and we'll talk to you about anything you want to discuss. Hey, by the way, don't forget, Free Talk Live is brought to you by 101 Reasons Film. You go to 101 Reasons Film Dot com. Check out this hour-long, awesome documentary about the Free State Project. The idea of moving 20,000 liberty-loving people all to the same place. Over, let's see, 1,600 people are here already. I think, 17. Did they cross 17 they, they crossed 17. 1,700 people are here already. About 10% of the uh, current membership in the Free State Project, current total participants, which is over 16,000 people, uh, I've already come here. The idea is to move 20,000, so we want to reach that 20,000 number. At that point, there'll be a five-year window of time in which all 20,000 have to move to New Hampshire. If you love liberty, if you care about freedom, and you're willing to actually do something about it, to join together with others who actually care about things like freedom, then you really need to check out the Free State Project. Please, go to freestateproject.org. But actually, better yet, go to 101reasonsfilm.com. Great intro to what's going on here. It's 101 Reasons Why New Hampshire is the Best Destination for People Who Love Liberty. That's 101ReasonsFilm.com. It's an hour-long documentary. It's free to watch online. Share it, whatever. I thought it was great, and I had the honor of being able to be one of the co-producers of it. So let's go to your calls and thoughts. Here we've got Sydney listening in Indianapolis to WIBC. Hello, Sydney. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's on your mind tonight? So I just wanted to see what you guys thought about this new, uh, I couldn't tell you what company or organization is putting out, but it's this new gun control commercial that shows a young child going into his mother's room 
picking up her gun out of her dresser and taking it to school, putting it out on the teacher's desk and saying, take this, I don't feel safe with it in my home. Oh, boy. Um, well, the first problem I have with that is, first of all, you're advocating to break many laws, many felonies being committed, but you're also, more important than the felonies, is you're telling a kid to go unsupervised and grab a loaded gun out of his mother's dresser. Yeah, I think that there's a lot um, of me, things wrong with issue. that. Um, it, it, not that, like, if it's being shown to adults, then I get I get the message that it's trying to portray, and I think mm-hmm. that it's a fine message. Uh, you know, that, that messaging is great. But the problem is, is you can't control your no, audience. That message is not great. Snitch on your parents? That's a terrible message. No, what I mean is, is that there's dangers in having uh, firearms available to children oh, to be able to get them. Okay. I mean, a firearm is a dangerous thing, and there's yep. no doubt about yep. it. Uh, children shouldn't be handling them unsupervised. Yes, I completely agree with the fact that the mother shouldn't have had that within the reach of a child. Um, but my greater issue is why would you advocate a child to go grab that? No, that's what it looks like. Access. It looks like you're asking yep. them to mimic the behavior, and uh, they'll do they do things like that. And, yeah, it's, it's just to me that if, if you're pushing for gun safety or gun control, that's the completely wrong way to do it because I um, read they went through how many felonies you'd be committing, and there's like six different felonies, and obviously those would go on to the parents at that point, not go to the child. Yeah, it's oh. a mess. When you say they went through how many felonies, who's they? Um, the website that produced the story, um, and they did it off oh, of their okay. state So there was a site that wrote a – just to be clear, there was a site that wrote a story about this advertisement that – Yes, is they covered TV. the story, and they said, Got if it. you were in our state, you would be committing this felony, this felony, and that felony. You as the parent and or the, as the child? Um, just the, the child taking the gun outside of right. the home without the parent. You know, you're getting um, weapons. Um, I can't honestly I can't remember all of them. One of them was carrying the weapon outside of the house without a concealed permit. Sure. A um, couple of them were theft of a weapon school property, a weapon on school property, and all those charges then do not fall onto the child, they fall onto the parent. So you're not only advocating a child to touch a gun that's unsupervised and loaded, you're also saying, you know, this is going to get your parents in trouble. So you don't recall the, uh, whatever the organization was that produced this propaganda piece? Um, I could not tell you the story that covered the story, or the people that covered the story, or the people that produced it. Okay. Um, I'm driving uh, right now. I t- I'll take your word for it. It sounds out. absolutely horrifying. And uh, thank you for the call tonight. Drive safe. Let's go to Dave in New Hampshire. He's, I'm going to guess, is this Dave Ridley? Yeah. Hey. I I, uh, I think you guys have not yet talked about the uh, anti-police militarization bill uh, in New Hampshire. Don't know much about it, Dave. Tell me about it. Yeah, there's been an article in Reading Magazine and uh, uh, WesternJournalism.com about it. came out a day or two ago. Uh, and basically the idea is that it bans the, the police in New Hampshire from uh, having anything that you can't get on the just the general market. You know, if, you, if a civilian can't have it, the police can't have now, it. Just, just to be old. clear, Dave, have you actually read the the legislation? Yeah, I have the, or at least, at least the relevant Does paragraph Does it prohibit uh, the current equipment that they have? Meaning that when it goes into effect, will it affect retroactively all of the stuff they've already acquired, or will it be that there will be a prohibition on receiving any further military equipment? Well, at the end it says, quote, any military-equipped vehicle or military-grade hardware acquired in violation hereof shall be forfeited, unquote. Uh, I'm not sure that that actually means stuff they got in 2011 or not. Um, Mm. It, yeah, it, it, could, it, it could mean always, that if they go ahead and get it anyway, then they'll forfeit it. Even right. if you just stop the oh. new acquisition, uh, I think that's a big deal. Oh, I agree. If if they could just stop new acquisition of militarized uh, police equipment, then yeah, I think that's a good thing. But obviously, I'd like to see them get rid of the Bearcats. They're going to howl at the moon if you try to take away their Bearcats. Oh, well, they'll be howling at well, the moon I, anyway. When I, what, I was saying, what I was saying at the beginning may be a little bit of an oversimplification, but it looks like it does limit them from, you know, Getting as, as much as much stuff as they could, and then tends to limit them towards stuff that's just you know on on the open market. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm sure there are some exceptions. There's one exception already I see for the state guard; they would be able to continue getting military grade stuff. Uh, but it, it, it applies to state agencies and political subdivisions of the state. Well, Dave, thanks for the heads up on that. Anything else you want to share? Oh, it's just nice to see us in Reason Magazine. We should be on the front page of the Washington Post every day, not just Reason Magazine. 
<laughs> well, you know, we're getting more coverage here in New Hampshire, I think, than any other liberty movement anywhere else. So, you know, what we get, I appreciate. I'm glad when uh, whoever it is covers what's happening here in, in New Hampshire because it is an exciting time and there's so much going on. And you're doing your best to cover it over at the Ridley Report at the theridleyreport.com. And thanks for the call tonight, Dave. Hopefully we'll see you in the State House. Uh, we've been up there a lot doing uh, testi- testifying on bills. Uh, a number of the keen activists have come up there. So hopefully we'll we'll run into you at some point. And thanks for the call tonight. That's Dave from Ridley Report. Dot com. The Pirate Bay is back, Mark. Uh, the Pirate Bay. I know you're excited. Uh, you know what? It's great news. They were taken down. A co- Actually, it's been, I think, a couple of months, several weeks. Uh, their website, thepiratebay.se. And Gadget has a quick story here. They're starting to wonder if it is nigh on impossible to keep the Pirate Bay down. <laughs> Just weeks after Swedish police raided the bootleg file site and knocked it offline, it's back. Torrent Freak reports that almost everything is up and running once again, complete with a Phoenix graphic to taunt authorities. <laughs> with that said, it's not quite the same experience that many veteran users would remember. While the pre-raid content remains intact, many of the original staffers have been locked out of this version. They're planning to create their own version of the bay that supposedly restores the community spirit of the original. It's not clear if that'll work, but it sounds like cops and copyright holders may have created more problems for themselves in trying to take down one of the best-known pirate havens. These people are passionate about uh, folks being able to share their content on the Internet. And this is really interesting stuff because, uh, you know, like, the the idea here is is that I can buy a, uh, a cassette tape, uh, back when we used to buy cassette tapes, and it was fine for me to let you listen to my cassette tape, mm-hmm. but it wasn't fine for me to copy it onto another cassette tape and then let you have that copy because, you know, copyrights or whatever or that is. Or to play the cassette tape for a bar. Yeah, or something right, like or that. to play it, yeah. uh, you know, in in those manners. And I get that if you're, you know, making money off of uh, the the playing of something, that the artist should get some of that. I mean, I'm 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 down with that. But I think that the, you know, it's just gotten it's just way too much when you're mm-hmm. going after kids. You know, the the fines are you know being leveled on parents because their kids can't pay them. You know, and of, grandparents. Yeah, hundred thousand dollars for their kids downloading some music. I think that's just ridiculous stuff. Absolutely. So well, I don't. Plus, don't forget, the Pirate Bay is just a website that hosts torrents. I mean, they don't even host illegal files or whatever. They're not hosting the music or the movies or whatever. It's the torrents that are being hosted on various different individuals' computers all around the world, and right. Pirate Bay only They're hosts just connecting the people. torrents. And those torrents aren't all pointing to illegal things. Like, no. for instance, Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Uh, that's a movie that I was ex- the executive producer of. I, you know, If I believed in intellectual property, I'd have full ability to authorize that, so it's totally legal for that to be be there. Free Talk Live audio is on Torrent, too, so whatever. Uh, by the way, the 101 Reasons film is also available on the Pirate Bay, so you can go and grab it there if you'd prefer. You don't have to watch it on YouTube. You can download an HD copy of it at your convenience at the piratebay.se. They're back. We'll see you online, tomorrow, uh, online and between now and then tomorrow night at freetalklive.com. Later. Have a good weekend. See you. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in, Creative Commons. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel any time. 
coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The latest episode of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, January 31st, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.25 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,284 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $230. Antiwar.com reports on Friday, Israel announced it is offering tenders for another 450 new settlement units in the occupied West Bank, spanning several neighborhoods in occupied East Jerusalem, as well as sites near Hebron. It's the first major settlement plan to go public since the elections were scheduled, and watchdog Peace Now was extremely critical, accusing Netanyahu of a pre-election grab. Settler voters are often sought after by right-wing parties, and Netanyahu may be trying to emphasize his policy of dramatic expansion at the expense of major diplomatic harm ahead of the vote. The U.S. again criticized the plan expansion, warning it will inflame tensions and harm the peace process. There's been no sign, despite repeated U.S. complaints, that Netanyahu intends to slow the expansion anytime soon. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports heading for an expected Saturday morning landing in Baja, Mexico, two balloonists crossing the Pacific have made history by traveling farther and longer in a gas balloon than anyone else ever. The pilots of the helium-filled two eagles eclipsed the distance record of more than 5,209 miles on Thursday afternoon and the duration record of more than 137 hours Friday morning. The old distance record was set in 1981 by the Double Eagle 5 on the only other Trans-Pacific balloon crossing. The previous duration record came in the historic 1978 Transatlantic Crossing by Double Eagle 2. The Two Eagles website takes care to note that the records remain unofficial until validated by the U.S. National Aeronautics Association and the International Air Sport Governing Body. At 6 p.m. Pacific Time Friday, the balloon was moving south of Baja, California at 17,200 feet, traveling at 45 miles per hour. Touchdown is expected for 8 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday. When their historic voyage ends, likely on a beach along the southern end of the peninsula, the pair will have traveled over 6,800 miles since taking off Sunday from Saga, Japan. The balloonists plan a little show for the cameras on their approach. They'll skim the ocean surface, trailing thick ropes to slow them down. Then they'll rise and land among the dunes in what is known as a splash and dance. A chase team was headed for the projected landing site Friday to record the arrival and help secure the balloon. However, the south of the border finale is far from the original flight plan and landing spot. The two eagles had expected to take a northern route into British Columbia, crossing the Canadian Rockies and then dropping down into the United States, perhaps landing somewhere in the eastern U.S. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expressCoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports Ohio has postponed the executions of seven death row inmates so it can procure an adequate supply of its new two-drug lethal injection protocol. U.S. District Judge Gregory L. Frost ordered the stay of all executions scheduled to take place in 2015 after the state changed the drugs it uses in executions. The change came after it took an extended amount of